Gary, some serious gourmet shit. What flavor is this? That's right, it's the all hell medium roast private blend. Check out the Geek Grind Coffee Nerdrotic page for our other options like the Decadent, Feathers of Liberty, Vanilla Infused Flavored Coffee. Or if you're looking for something darker, try the Dark Roast FNT Blend of the Fellowship. You know what? Just buy all three. GeekGrindCoffee.com. Use discount code Nerdrotic. Huzzah! These are daggers dropped by my men that were slaughtered by an ice troll in the second day. But I do not like to talk of such things. And for you, Legolas, this is a new bow, so that you may kill a troll as quickly as I did in under ten seconds. And for Samwise Ganji, rope forged from the hair of an ice troll that I killed many years ago. And for Frodo, the bottled tears of an ice troll. Did I mention I killed an ice troll many years ago? In under ten seconds? Fare thee well, my friends, and may these gifts forge from the body of an ice troll that I killed many years ago in the second age in under ten seconds. Fare you well on your journey. Nerdorotic.com <laughs> It always ends too soon. Oh, it's such a great intro. Cheers. Thank you. We need to put Chris in there. We need to make one for Chris. Sure. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll let Perry Chan know. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to give yeah. Perry a little bit of break. He's been working on something for like a two weeks straight, which is great. Uh, welcome wow. to the Nerdrotic Nooner, everyone, because everybody needs a nooner. That's right. Even if it's not noon where you are, you can pretend it's noon and it's fine. Uh, so, uh, we obviously have a special guest, comic book girl, 19, Danica. Yes. What's up? Hi. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh. I'm so honored. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Just hope you're aware you might get in trouble for showing up on the show. Chris Gore is very controversial. Okay. Just yeah. Am I? Of, yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I just like weird movies. Yeah. Well, yeah. you're a weird dude, so. Uh, well, that's true. You're amongst yeah. friends, Danica. But you're I mean, weird. I'm a weird, I'm a weird guy too. It's fine. I get it. Cool. It's cool. <laughs> cool. Uh, but we also have some big news, like huge news that happened this morning, which is so funny because I'm making a video. Uh, it, it was like, it's like Disney. When you see the video, you'll know. Okay. Cause I recorded it before this happened. Uh, I gave Disney some advice and it looks like they listened to it, even though they hadn't heard it. And, uh, they fired wow. the writers and directors from daredevil. <laughs> And oh, this wow. show, this show has been shot. I don't know how much, but remember the Screen Actors Guild, uh, I'm sorry, the Film Actors Guild was out there and they were disrupting the shoot. And the Writers Guild too. Remember they went in and picked certain days to disrupt shoots and one of the shoots was Daredevil and they had to shut it down for a day. So they shot stuff and they looked at it and they went, uh-uh. 
So wow. uh, we'll talk about that. We watched Loki. We'll mm-hmm. talk about that. I've almost forgotten about it, but uh, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Hey, what's that? Did the second episode of Loki come out? No. No, no. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Loki, Loki Thursdays. Um, but uh, thank you. Always love to be here with you, X Ray Girl. And Danica, I have been a fan for years. I've known Danica, <laughs> I don't want to say, uh, more than a decade. And yes, her videos on just comic books and pop culture and the Dune coverage and Dune Book Club. I love that you kept the videos up. So she, Danica, will do this like, uh, just to sing your praises because, you know, maybe you won't do it yourself. But this, oh, um, thank you. The Dune Book Club is so good as someone who's read the Dune novels or at least through Heretics, and then it sort of went off the rails for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, God Emperor is my favorite, and it's you're, so good. It's, it's so, so good. good. It's just the the way that you kind of break it apart. You read the book with Danica. She she goes through that, and then just like. When you do react videos, I just like, I love what you've been doing. You're very opinionated. You don't give a fuck, which is kind of (laughs) like you're in good company. And uh, I'm excited because Akira is one of my all-time favorite um, films. Probably one of the greatest animated movies ever made. Danica has a Kickstarter now for Mm -hmm. a documentary about how this movie was made. I I actually don't know a lot Mm -hmm. about it, so I'm excited for it. And I'm sure there'll be a link in the description for it. So, yes, I'm very excited. It'll be my first full length uh, feature documentary. Uh, in the past, I've made three hour long documentaries about the X Men, uh, Epic History X Men Part One, Two, and Three. And so I feel like, you know, I've been on YouTube for over a decade. And like, I think it's time to, you know, leave the nest and like do something a little bigger and a little crazier. And I'm just so excited. I mean, I was thinking about. I was actually, this whole thing came from, I was uh, streaming on Twitch and we watched Akira together and uh, I got like really wine drunk and I just started crying. Like, I was just like, somebody made this, like somebody drew this, like, you don't understand how hard this was to make, you know? And I just got so (laughs) emotional about it. And at the time I was like, I want to make a documentary. What should I make it about? And then I was like, oh, like, I feel very strongly about this film. I feel like this would be a really good one. And there isn't a full length documentary about Akira out there. And so I was like, well, maybe I should do it. And um, yeah, and so I'm I'm wrangling this beast. It's an epic beast. I've kind of chosen like the Mount Everest of anime movies to discuss. Um, it's it's. I'm like, oh, wow, this is going to be a wild adventure to make this film. But I'm really looking forward to it. And the Kickstarter is already funded. We've hit our first stretch goal. We're on our way to hitting our second stretch goal. Uh, I'm very excited about it. But again, it's like the more support, the better. So if you want to see a full length documentary and learn more than you ever wanted to know about Akira, Check me out on uh, Kickstarter, Akira the Documentary Take Two. Uh, I can't wait to see it. I, I know Akira. I know I'm a famous weeb, but um, like totally famous. <laughs> That's why people come to this channel. Uh, but uh, I know that uh, my, my Akira story is. Uh, Everybody's got one too. I love that everybody yeah. has an Akira story. Yeah. <laughs> Mine's a good one. Uh, right after I got out of uh, um, the, the, I was under the. Uh, uh, the rule of the state. I was living in their building for a little while. I'm just trying uh-huh. to put this nicely. Why? I just got okay. out of prison. Fuck it. I don't care. Yeah. Uh, and um, <laughs> I worked in the tattoo industry. I know a lot of people who got out of prison, yeah. so that is not a bummer for me. <laughs> and I was working at the warehouse. Where? Uh, the warehouse. I don't know if anybody remembers the warehouse records. Oh, I do. Uh-uh. Of course. 100%. And uh, so I saw this cartoon. Uh, we, you know, we got back then. We got to play whatever the hell we want. You know, as long as it was like PG, right, in the store. And I'm like, who? There's a this, this cartoon looks pretty cool. Akira. So I put it on and my manager's like, no. <laughs> and I like, what is a cartoon, dude? And uh, <laughs> he's like, no, dude, it's not like trouble. that. It's no, not like that. Got in yeah. a little bit of trouble. But that made well, me that... want to watch it more. I'm like, oh, really? Wow. Right. All right. Oh, well, now I have Someone to tells watch you it. No. <laughs> oh, it's bad. It's a bad cartoon. Yeah. Oh, it's got some titties in it. Oh, oh, oh. I was informed it was uh, Japanimation. Remember when we called it yes. that, Chris? Japanimation. Oh, my yes. God. That's like Japanimation. Japanimation. <laughs> that's, a cute, oh, that's cute, though. That's not bad. I like branding. that, though. Yeah. I like it, too. Well, of but course anime. you like it, X-Ray I mean, X-ray it's girl. like anime. You know, like anime. <laughs> it's very to the point. Hello, is it a girl fan of Japan animation? <laughs> Hello, K 
Sherry. Um, I have an Akira story too. Uh, it's like in the making because I actually have never watched this, of course. Oh, I'm shocked. A lot of other things. I'm shocked, I know. Um, I, uh, it's on my list and I actually kind of want to watch it in between um, now and Friday Night Tights so that I'll have that in, the, in my little pocket. So yeah, I'm excited to watch Japanimation. Although I've just watched the trailer and it's so gory. Oh my god. Oh, it's for adults. Like it's yeah, it's full on uh adult well not an adult movie like that, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's mature. It's for mature audiences. Yes. No, yes. But, uh, Our audience gonna... basically. Well not we're not mature. We're old, but we're not mature. Right, right. That's true. That's yeah. true. But lots of body horror, lots of um I mean, there is a lot of violence in it and it's you know, the French Good. had a term for it on their posters and it was like it's violent. And it's beautiful. <laughs> and I just, I love that tagline. It's like, oh, oh France. I that's like so that. perfect. Violent that's so chic. Nice. It's, it's, I was like, yes, that's hot. I was France. just there. I was just there. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Did you get any bed bugs? No. Back? <laughs> no, no. I did not bring any friends back. My uh, my wife got us like a really bougie hotel room. I'm like, if I'm going to be here, hell yeah. make it bougie. Okay. And she hell did. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. She did. Gosh. It was uh, quite, but got some comic books I can't read, but they're beautiful. So, uh, oh my gosh, the ugh, the French comic books. I mean, they. I mean, outside of Japan, France has like the other like mainstay comics where it's just like, wow, you guys just really put a lot into this, and it looks really good. Thank you so much, France. I really yeah. appreciate it. They take it very seriously over there, though. Like, I I know like some French comic book artists that are just like, I just look at their work and I'm like, wow, this is like. This is, these are oil paintings. You're making oil paintings for your comic. Like, holy shit, this is amazing. Uh, his name is Valentin Secher. <laughs> he's it, also very handsome. So sexy. <laughs> and just so talented. And I just, like, love his work. Jerk. He's done a lot of work on the Meta Barons and stuff and some other things. Oh, yeah. The uh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I sold that. I like that. Uh, you sold the Meta Barons? Yes. I used to I used to have a comic shop a billion years ago. Oh, I, I thought you mean you had it in your collection. And you sold no, it. No, no, you no, like no, got rid no, of it. No. I was like sacrilege. No. Whoa. Oh, you know, oh, there's some sad stories of comics I've sold that we will not get into. That'll be a stream for another day that I'm slowly <laughs> buying back. But uh, no, no, the Meta Barons is awesome. Yeah. Totally. Uh, yeah, you started your YouTube channel like a year before I sold my comic shop, right? 2012. Mm -hmm. so, 2012. Because mm -hmm. I started watching you like early, you know. 13, 14, something like that. When you, when, yeah, when yeah. people could that's still talk about started, comic books. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's when it started hitting, you know, and that was such a golden era of talking about comic books yep. because you had like Marvel now and the new 52 and like all this excitement. And this was before they were sold to Warner brothers and Disney. And it was just like, there was an uh, image comics were like bursting with amazing titles. Like it was a real hot time and i was happy well, to be part of it dc was still under warner brothers at that time but warner oh, brothers were they? Let okay. the, left them alone like that was oh, back in okay. an era that, where yeah, they yeah, just yeah. like okay they had a, this guy named bob wayne who was awesome he would talk to uh he was uh, like a comic book shop liaison and like they mm -hmm. they had their shit together and they were run autonomously pretty much but then that changed obviously right. but right. uh yes yeah, so those were fun days those those uh, early 2010s yeah. Uh, was kind of around like right before it was going to end, though. Like, we, I mean, we, I know. How little I did know. we know? <laughs> no, I knew. I knew when Marvel bought Disney or Disney bought Marvel, I was like, oh no, this is, this is going to be bad. And then it was. And, um, but that I will say, like, back then, too, was my last favorite run of X Men. J uh, Jason Aaron's run on Wolverine and the X Men was like, so yeah. epic and so good and then the x-men ever since was just like burp, 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 burp. i don't yep. read anymore i'm done like i'm out bye they de-emphasized them because uh fox had the movie rights it was yes. so insane they oh uh, they, they fucked them so hard with the terrigen mist bomb and like everyone got m pox and they were all dying and sterilized yep. and it was like i the, the mutants can't get a break you know like oh my god it was such a horror show imagine like warner brothers doesn't have the film rights to batman so they de-emphasize batman they right. commit right. suicide basically uh, yeah that's it's what marvel like, did okay like Not not one of Perlmutter's better decisions, but, um, mm -hmm. well, he's not around anymore, but he, like, that guy did provide balance that we're finding out now. So, that so, um, a little teaser for, uh, my next video is all about, like, how Marvel, like, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is failing exactly like the comics did. Like, yeah. 
uh, uh, it's eerie how many similarities that we all could have figured out a long time ago because they decided to repeat the same mistakes. But you'll see. I, I kind of lay it out mm-hmm. for you. You'll Excellent. see that in a couple days. But uh, today, because I'm, uh, this is the famous Weeb channel. I don't know. Second to gaming, maybe Chris. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got to do a, we've got to do our uh, Geezer Gaming channel too. Geezer Gaming. <laughs> okay, let's. I know what. Uh, around the holidays, let's do Geezer Gaming. Okay, I know the game we should play. It's the dumbest game. I just bought it. It's called YouTube Star, and it's <laughs> no, about running a YouTube no, channel. No, what? Is not that game. telling me that. Oh it's my so, god, it looks so bad. It what? Looks so bad. Crazy. Yeah. It's just like Gary in real life. <laughs> that is a game for real. You're not happy with me game right called now. YouTube. St- it looks so wow. bad. But also, I've been watching X Ray Girl. I've been watching you playing uh, Phantom Liberty Cyberpunk 2077. I love oh. Cyberpunk 2077. I finished I love it. it. Love Chris? that game. Phantom I don't know Liberty you're a gamer, already... Chris. Chris, I no. want to be. I want to be bad at a game about something I do. <laughs> right, no, we'll be, look, so dumb. We could probably look at the trailer for it. Uh, buddy. <laughs> Find the trailer. Like, yes. Oh my god. That Find the trailer my Christmas for YouTube, present. But, but X Ray Girl. So, um, I saw you perk up when Danica said she got wine drunk because yeah, I did. there are several <laughs> channels. X Ray Girl does a show called Poor They're Choices. Already besties. Uh-huh. <laughs> P-O-U-R choices. Oh, uh, oh yes. Yes. She's on a show called Simpcast. I'm not sure what you think about that. But uh yeah, Danica uh Simp it ain't easy, you know. <laughs> right, but, but tell me uh, about it. Mean, isn't. <laughs> you you know some of the the simp life, uh some of the males of the simp life, I'm I'm guessing, based uh, on this is what I was gonna say. So definitely check out Danica's um Kickstarter. But do not, under any circumstance, look at her Instagram. Nope. Uh, you should look at her Instagram. It's beautiful. No, <laughs> it's- I, I, I'm like just warning people that if you look at Danica's Instagram, uh-huh. you're gonna things are popping. Dude, they, they, are popping. you might have a Chris nooner. Is trying to lose us viewers. You might right have now. a nooner <laughs> unexpectedly. <laughs> You can That's look at really Instagram funny. and listen to YouTube at the same time. You don't. Yeah, it's, you don't, don't it's only thirty-eight saying, seconds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's only thirty-eight seconds. Oh my! Yeah. Oh my. So uh, uh, there's so much going on right now, and the actors aren't even back. I know. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I was talking to somebody uh, who works in the industry last night, and they're like, "Yeah, we're just we went home. We're sitting around waiting for the actors." And uh, apparently, um, I heard from somebody else. Like every day that's delayed, it's it costs them more money. Like these, uh, any delay from a release date and stuff. Uh, you know, they budget for time, and they don't just hit a pause button. Certain things, certain loans require interest, and yes. uh, so they lo- they lose a shit ton of money over this. So that's yeah. why uh, you want to get the. Do you have the Daredevil article, uh, X Ray Girl? This yes, dro- I do. This dropped this morning. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, so okay. To me, Daredevil, Netflix's Daredevil is the greatest live action adaptation of a comic book that Marvel will ever do. It's probably my favorite live I mean outside of Superman the movie and Spider-Man 2, it's Daredevil season 1 and 2. I like season 3. It's got its problems, but D- Daredevil season 1 or 2 are like perfect. Mm-hmm. And season 1 is really perfect. Uh, perfect music, perfect editing, perfect acting. They capture the like the tortured Catholic guilt, Matt Murdock. Uh, oh yeah, uh, like ever across the board. Foggy Nelson is effing Foggy Nelson. It's it's yeah. yeah. And they get every character right from the comics in tone and in feel. I mean, Vincent D'Onofrio. Vincent, like yeah. enough said. Like he, his Wilson Fisk is just like. I was definitely on his side. I was like, I love him. Like, I would be his Vanessa. Like, no problem. Like, please. No, th- they actually. This was an old Spider-Man villain. This is a silly old Spider-Man villain that, like, that Frank Miller kind of elevated, and I, th- I they, ca- he captured it perfectly. He was the best villain in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, better than Thanos. He was the best villain. Now mm-hmm. they screwed that up in Hawkeye, unfortunately, but it's the best thing they've ever done. And uh, they were going to reboot it. They called it Daredevil Born Again, although they did the Born Again storyline in season three. So Mm -hmm. it's Daredevil Born Again again. (laughs) But (laughs) um, now it's uh, canceled again. Uh, The writers Uh are fired again. And this is uh, actually a smart move. And the the interesting thing, again, is they shot this. I don't know how much, but there's there's shots. So so they saw it and they went, "Mm." 
And this goes on top of, you weren't with us, Chris. I was talking to somebody at uh, Comic-Con with, uh, with Quarter Black Garrett. And they told me, they're like, man, Echo, Marvel tried everything. They uh, Three rounds of reshoots. Then they seriously thought about shit canning it, but they couldn't for legal reasons. So that's mm. why they're just pushing it off and hope nobody watches it. And it, apparently it lost an episode. So Daredevil hits the reset button as Marvel overhauls its TV business. Launched during the pandemic with a playbook to shoot 150 plus, uh, 150 million plus seasons. This was going to be 18 episodes, by the way. Mm. With no pilots. Wow. Uh, the Disney unit is undergoing growing pains and seeing the logic of traditional TV culture. So I want to add that it dropped last night that Paramount is no longer doing limited series. So they're done. Paramount TV is not going to do something like, uh, what was that What was that movie about um, the making of The Godfather? Or the, uh, the oh, limited series. The limited series. Uh, it, it, I, I, I don't, I don't so know. So they're not I'm doing anything like that. They're not doing anything like that anymore. So they're not doing one-off limited series. It's going to have to be a continuing series, and they're not doing it, and they said specifically, in the United States. They're going to do it other places, but they're not mm -hmm. going to do it in the United States under the Writers Guild of America and the Screen Actors Guild because the strike was a purge. So now we have, this is not just Daredevil, according to this article, this is Disney Marvel rethinking their entire television division. Like, So, uh, hey, all those people who said Marvel was doing fine, uh, they're not. Then maybe they're that's not. probably what they're not. Yeah. But, and uh, guess what? This this happened before. I seem to recall in uh, it's another part of Marvel. I think it's called the publishing division. Um, the same thing happened. <laughs> really weird, mm, isn't it? Yeah. Weird? Um, yeah. It didn't take long to see the problem after Marvel Studios' Daredevil Born Again Again paused production in mid June during the writer strike. Fewer than half of the series' eighteen episodes have been shot. Uh, but that's still what's fewer than half, five or six episodes, millions wow. of dollars, millions. Uh, but it was enough for Marvel executives, including chief Kevin Feige to review the footage and come away with clear eyed assessment. This is fucking shit. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not what he said. Uh, the show wasn't working. Uh, so in late September, Marvel quietly let go of head writers, Chris Ord and Matt Corman quietly let go fired and also released the directors of the remainder of the season as a part of a significant creative reboot of the series, The Hollywood Reporter has learned. The studio is now on the hunt for new writers and new directors for the project, which stars Charlie Cox and Matt as Matt Murdock, the blind lawyer turned superhero, and Vincent D'Onofrio. Problem is, they recast and gender swapped Ben Urich. What? Which they already race swapped, which is fine. He was fine in the series. But um, uh, here's the problem. Uh, you, you still don't have half the cast. And there's a very easy solution, guys. You want to hear my easy solution? What is it? What is it? Tell hire, us. hire the Netflix writers and directors, maybe? Am I going out on a limb here? Right? Yeah. I mean, that worked. They Tried were working. True. They were making it work. What's interesting about this <clears throat> for me is that this is acknowledgement that they know that they're going down the wrong path. So yeah. we've heard yeah. rumblings of... We're not sure if this is working. Echo's going to drop all on one day. Um, Ironheart is pushed to 2025. 2025, that... yes. Uh -oh. So this is clear acknowledgement that they know what they've been doing isn't working. And even the whole thing with um, with Kang and where that is going in multiverses. Where is that going? <laughs> right. I mean, like where? Like all this multi. Like everyone has their own multiverse story. And I thought when they were going to go into multiverse territory, they would all be you know like one show or, or movie would feed into the other show and movie and then but no like they're all like separate multiverse stories that are different which i'm like what that's weird but not just that the multiverse stories are they've just proven to just lower the stakes rather than raise the stakes mm -hmm. yeah because you've defeated yeah. kang uh how many times has kang been defeated it twice just doesn't well seem... you've seen yeah. him defeated three times now yeah you'll see in episode four and then in, in the final episode, apparently in the final episode of uh, Loki season two, there is some cataclysmic event that affects the entire Marvel 
Oh, universe. now now it's doing that because that's what it yeah, should have yeah. done at the end of season. I thought that was the end of season one. Was like, yes. oh, this is the multiverse. <laughs> right. I thought that was gonna feed uh, into all the movies no. and everything, and then it did it, and then I was like, wait, what? They're serious this time. They're gonna multiverse the multiverse, man. Okay, cool. Right. Well, we're already done with the multiverse. We did it. Now it's boring, and you have to go do something else because it's already been done. But do you remember the rumors before um, Multiverse of Madness came out where it was like, we're going to see Tom Cruise as Tony Stark. You're going to see like it right. was just like it was all like fans speculating on things they wanted to see. Right. And it ended up being a a, a, a big nothing. Um, it just sort of a colossal. There thud. was barely any multiverse in it. I mean, right. We, just, right? we like kind of had that one scene quickly going through different things. But really, we're just in like, what, two different realities or something? I don't know. It wasn't it was not impressive the multiverse storyline well, the only impressive thing might have been the pizza balls in that one universe and bruce campbell's cameo but <laughs> yeah. if that, if well, that's was it like daddy's that... pizza balls or something what was yeah. it like <laughs> yeah. what was bruce pizza campbell's thing that's gonna be my <laughs> retirement job <laughs> yeah pizza balls but, Pineapple but pizza that's balls. the most memorable thing that's that's sad it should have been this crazy i mean i i i just feel like they they didn't map this out or they didn't like no they did not map it out they did not map it out at all no 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 so in that conversation with that person who was um possibly looking for a job or I don't being know. asked to work for a job i don't know either i do know but i'm completely we'll have to talk anything. we'll talk behind uh, the scenes. so but in that conversation uh, i was told that they definitely definitely know they fucked up like they right. they absolutely know now. It took them a minute because they were listening. I'm not defending Kevin Feige. <clears throat> this is all lip service to me, by the way. Till I right. see, and this is actions. These are actions, but it depends on who they uh, like. I I've, I'm not going to accept this. I'm sorry, unless you recast uh, everybody from the original Daredevil right down to Rosario Dawson. Uh, it, it there's no way it can be good like they have to go get uh the original writers like drew goddard was the the showrunner he developed the show it was steven tonight wrote the show that's that's where you start right there that's where you start those guys uh, drew goddard knows and steven tonight they both know daredevil and it does help to know daredevil and they also happen to be pretty talented yeah, it, guys it helps to know the comic that you're writing a show kind of for sure yeah a little bit yep Little show called One Piece did pretty well, uh, pr because they like they were journeyman creatives, but they were into One Piece, and it helps to have you know Oda was there the whole time. Uh, so uh, this is an admission of failure. Uh, now we'll see. I, I uh, go on, Chris. Oh no, I had a quick comment. Sure. You know how do you get so many episodes in and realize it's not working? Because one of the things, and I have a question. We should explore this. Normally in television, you make a pilot, you spend money on a pilot. You're looking for, is the tone working? Is this thing working? Should we make changes to costume? Is this character they'll swap out? I mean, famously, I would love to see famously. They shot a game of Thrones pilot with a different cast. Yes. And it's horrible. Oh. It's horrible. And, uh, apparently it's horrible. It's I want to see I, it so see, bad. I want to see it so bad. I want to see the game of Thrones pilot. That's never been seen um uh you know but i, I want to see it but normally you would do, is is marvel because i think we've talked about how marvel just doesn't marvel and disney don't know how to do television look at the star wars shows are they making pilots or are they green lighting things without making a pilot because that may be where part of the problem is traditional you know television you make a pilot you take a step back where can we make improvements when you just launch into doing 18 episodes of a show without having done a pilot to critique to right. improve the quality, yeah. where does that leave you? So right. I'm I mean, just asking the question. That's like launching into like doing a giant oil painting without sketching it out first and having a sketch of what you're doing. And that's, Precisely. people don't, people don't do that. <laughs> like artists, I mean, maybe somebody does, but most artists generally sketch it out first. Yeah. You need the pilot. You, and, and they just mentioned that, I mean, that's kind of the Netflix model is that they've gotten rid of the pilot. They've just abandon it and gone headlong and 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 greenlit shows for two seasons yeah you well, know? It's, i think a lot of it is like the content race though it's like the great yes. content race for all these streaming services so they're just like we just gotta make stuff it doesn't matter we, we just gotta have it on there which is wrong you need to have quality content yes you need to have content you do need to have uh quantity as well but you need to make sure that the quantity that's going on there is quality 
And yeah. that's kind of what they're missing. Yeah, Paul Chato talked about this when he picked shows. He's like, hey, I know this was going to be a mid-show, and this one's probably going to be a piece of crap, but, like, we do need to fill time slots. And, I mean, quite frankly, there isn't that much quality out there, and that that remains the same. There's a, there's a finite amount of talent out there, and you, you just can't crap out more of it. And it's obvious. And, like, when you get to Daredevil, like, they've been putting out all these B-list, C-list, uh, gender-swapped, race-swapped, tokenized characters you know and they didn't put any care into them which you know what does some of the like something like she hulk uh which technically is a is a you know it's a derivative character but it's one that people loved that was mm -hmm. marvel's biggest fuck up of all of them was screwing up she hulk they, they had a lot of fuck ups but that's character that had the most potential that they screwed up out the gate then they get to daredevil this is a this is top five marvel character this is a beloved Marvel character that uh, is one of the few Marvel characters that's had a pretty solid comic run that had one from, say, the 60s up until 2010. You know, mm -hmm. maybe a little before 2010. Really solid comic book run. You know, peaks and valleys and stuff, but you can read the whole thing and you'll have a lot of fun. Um, they can't screw this one up. And uh, I've mentioned it before. I didn't create it. I, I just put a name out there. I call it the MCU. It stuck because that's what they made. They made the MCU. So now you've removed all this male energy from the male brand, and now you got one of the all most right. male effing characters, and they're like, oh, we can't make this. No, you can't because you've completely lost your way. And the thing is, you don't come back from this. You can fix it all day long. Uh, right. You'll get some of the people back, but you're never going to get all the people back. You're never going to get Endgame again. That's just – that's gone. No, Look, no, no. I mean, that, but that's the thing. It's like – Everything's cyclical and nothing ever goes up forever. You know what I'm saying? And it's like that was a peak and that was a high peak and that was awesome. And they what, what they accomplished with that was amazing. But you can't expect that you're going to like keep going and like, you know, it's like you have to have a come down. And this is the come down for That's sure. That's the problem with companies with shareholders. You just got to keep right, feeding right. It's the like trough. Profits. Profits. We got to have profits. It's like they, that's not natural and that's not like true of life. So I'm not, mm, I don't know. No, you bring it you, <laughs> like the, I, with Daredevil, like after Avengers, that was like Daredevil season one was really smart. Mm -hmm. You had post, you had post uh, the battle in New York and you had all the, cr the crime bosses taking advantage of the yes. destruction. I mean, that's a right. great storyline that could have gone on forever. Totally. Uh, and uh, they, they screwed it up, you know, and they brought us Kang. Kang. Right. Uh, let me get through this. This is uh, though uh, through it all, the company eschewed. Is it eschewed? Uh, the traditional. I'm uneducated. Uh, no, eschewed. That's correct. Yeah, you, yeah, okay. you got it. You, you nailed it. Good guess. Uh, the traditional TV making model. It didn't commission pilots, but instead shot entire 150 million plus seasons of TV on the fly. Wow. <laughs> Didn't we? Case it didn't hire showrunners. They didn't. They, they didn't hire showrunners. What? They shot everything all at once. Um, and I think there was some idiots on YouTube going, "This is not sustainable." <laughs> you know, I, I seem to recall it. Uh, right. I don't know. Uh, it it didn't hire showrunners. So this is the thing I talked about because I had talked to somebody who had possibly worked on a show or a movie, and they're like, "What they do is they bring in." The right, they cast the writers based on their identity. They have them plot out a season, write up maybe a first episode, a last episode. Then they, they're they gone on another project. Directors come in, and uh, or they have a writer. Say there's a writer named Basha K. Ali, and uh, she writes season one of Miss Marvel. And then she gets a deal at Netflix and fucks off completely. And then it leaves it to the directors to fix everything she did because the Marvel tried to call her back, and she said no. <laughs> she wow. said no. So all the directors had to had to put in overtime to to fix this, and and then that was it. Marvel didn't even like try to bring in other writers and stuff. Uh, it was kind of a disaster, and that was their most critically acclaimed show. <laughs> and it happened wow. with every show. Writer would fuck off. Director. That's why the director for Loki. It's like I'm out of here. I ain't yeah. doing this again. Honestly, uh, I think part of it is because they don't, they're famous for just not paying well. The, you know yeah. what I mean? Like you're I, doing the show. It's, it's, you're basically doing the show for the prestige, um, not for the money because the money yeah. is so low. Did you see the comparison between what the uh, Tatiana Maslany was paid 
and uh, the actor who played Zoro from One Piece. Yeah. And how, oh, yeah. how the disparity was insane. Like what she got paid is is crazy. And she was the lead of the show. I mean, Zoro is obviously one of the leads in an ensemble show, mm-hmm. but uh, he was paid far more than she was. Chris, there's like, when I say mid-tier YouTubers, I'm talking like a million, two million subs, right? Mid-tier YouTubers. Uh, there's that make more than Tatiana Maslany made <laughs> well, okay, in, a, in a week. Wow. All right. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, it didn't hire showrunners. That's that's mind boggling. When I first time I heard that, Danica, I thought they were lying to me. The access media, which they usually are. But no, that is the truth. Uh, wow. But instead depended that's on a choice. That's a real choice. It, it's a, life is full of choices, Danica. Life is full of choices. <laughs> but instead uh, depended on film executives to run its series. And as Marvel does for its movies, it relied on post-production and reshoots to fix it. Uh, yes, basically it was a bunch of pr- uh, producers uh, giving them a bunch of notes going, fix it in post! Because, you know, famous last right, words. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, that always works out well. Yeah, it does. I worked in a very short time in post, and uh, it's got it's a job you gotta love. <laughs> or you'll hate it. Um, <laughs> right. Even though they remain, uh, even though they remain, along with Star Wars titles, the most watched shows on D Plus Marvel series have recently faced a number of creative challenges. <laughs> you mean like being good uh, and cries of diminishing returns? Well, to be fair to the D Plus shows, you can't diminish what was already diminished. That's just me, though. Uh, from critics and audience metrics, causing a major shift at the studio to move. Uh, uh, to move to make TV shows more in the more traditional way. Like with like writers that stick around and like showrunners and like just like have a team of people that work on a project and see the project through together. That's cool. Bingo. Whoa. What a concept. Well, I mean, wild. It sounds like they kind of tried that with She Hulk. It didn't work out very well. Maybe like hire a good showrunner. That would be. Well, that's also, yeah. You gotta, you you can't just hire anybody. You also have to hire people who know what they're doing and are into it, you know? Right. We're trying to marry the Marvel culture with the traditional television culture, says Brad Winderbaum, Marvel's head of streaming television and animation. He's about to get fired. Uh, It comes down to how can we tell stories in television to honor what's so great about the source material? I'm going to throw something. I'm going to throw something. I'm going to throw something. I need to read that again. It comes down to how can we how can we tell stories? In television shows that honor what's so great about the source material, maybe actually give a fuck about the source source material. Right, like maybe read it and maybe like, read it and like use it. I maybe, don't know. Maybe fucking hire people who know it. Maybe don't skip decades of great stories that sold in the millions right. and go to straight to the shit that sold in the thousands. Maybe that's a start. <laughs> maybe it's just a thought though. The fi- I want to fire that guy. What an idiot. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's like stories are stories. Like if it's a good story in a comic book, I mean, it's a visual and written story. So it's like, it's, it can be translated to television. Like it's not the blueprint is there. Yeah. It's there. It's all there. It's there. It's there, but then it's not because they need to put in what they know, which is eating food, talking about their politics. See, this, this, this is what I love about Japanese animation, Japan animation. This is what I love about it is you know i'll watch a show on crunchyroll and then i'll be like oh this is interesting i'm gonna go back and read the manga and i'll check out the mangas from the library and then guess what the show is just pretty much the comic i mean there's like there's different slight differences here and there but they just take the manga series that did well and then they animate it and then they make it a show and it's so good and you're like wow this is great what a concept Oh, my goodness. Remember that X-Men cartoon from the 90s that absolutely everybody loves? It's right. just a truncated version of the comics. That's all of it the is. the comics. It's the comic. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's all it is. They really simple. The comics. They took the comics and then they did it. Uh, yeah. I know. That's. I mean, that's what got me into comics, that, that TV series. That was it. That, that TV and series. Spider-Man made, and that, that got me in. The X-Men show made more X-Men fans than the X-Men comic. By far. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I don't know if I'm going to make it through this thing. 
Uh, with Daredevil's new direction, Marvel hopes to right the ship on a project with the sky-high expectations. Not really. I don't have any. Uh, the show is Marvel's first to feature a hero who already had a successful series that they canceled on Netflix. Think about the shows that are still on right now and they canceled Daredevil. We live in the worst timeline. We do. <laughs> really do. Running three seasons, but sources say that Corman and Ord crafted a legal procedural that did not resemble the Netflix. They made a She-Hulk, dude. Oh. They did it. Oh, uh -oh. no. We joked about that. They actually did it. Oh. Let's make Daredevil a legal procedural. You know what? Let's make a Hulk TV series, but it'll be about getting women in STEM. That That's what we'll do. We'll just have Bruce Banner <laughs> as a science. Sciencer. He's sciencing. <laughs> oh. Known for its action and violence, Cox didn't even show up in costume until the fourth episode. <laughs> oh. Uh, oof. Oh, somebody spilled the beans at Marvel. This is kind of funny. They're embarrassing the writers. Uh, Marvel, after greenlighting the concept, found itself needing to rethink the original intention of the show. No shit! Um... Marvel plans to keep some scenes and episodes, though. No, no, scrap it all. Scrap it all. As a matter of fact, no. I don't want to. They can't. They, they spent. They spent too much money. I have a suggestion in my video that's coming out tomorrow. Watch my suggestion. I, I actually give them unsolicited advice that they don't deserve. By the way, uh, that they will not take. <laughs> that they will not take. Absolutely will not. I've been take. doing that for years. Yes. I know that feeling. I know that feeling where you're just like, hey, this is an idea. I don't know. Like, you can just take this idea. You'd have it for free. No, nobody, nobody's listening. Marvel plans to keep some scenes. Daredevil is far from the first Marvel series to undergo drastic behind the scenes changes. Those who work with Marvel on the TV side have complained of a lack of central vision that has, according to sources, begun to afflict the studio shows with creative differences and tension. TV is a writer-driven medium, says, no shit. It's also a character-driven <laughs> medium, but they have to be well-written characters. Uh, says one insider familiar with the Marvel process. Well, that, that is a genius right there. Marvel is a Marvel-driven medium. Oh, no, it's a char sense. Marvel's a character-driven oh. medium, you dipshit. Uh, on the Oscar Isaac Star Moon Knight, show creator and writer Jeremy Slater quit, and director Mohamed Diab took the reins. Jessica Gao developed and wrote She-Hulk, attorney at law, but was sidelined. Uh, once director Kat Cario came on board, that didn't really show. She was all over the place for that show. Are you kidding me? Uh, production was challenged with COVID hitting cast and crew, and Gal was brought back to oversee post-production. Okay, she was brought back. Remember that. That's happened on almost every show. Somebody was asked to leave, and then they're brought back on almost mm -hmm. every D-plus show. Uh, a typical showrunner duty, but it's the rare that Marvel head writer uh, who has such oversight. God dang it. I really hope someday I can talk to the publicly to the to the people I'm talking to that will give you insight on this. It's it's enlightening. It's really enlightening. Uh, even though the company does not have writers' first approach to TV, directors could feel shortchanged as well. The whole fix it, fix it in post attitude makes it feel like a director doesn't matter sometimes, says one person familiar with the process. They don't. Only Kevin Feige matters. He got rid of everybody. Uh, everybody who helped him create the MCU. That's it. Actually, I can't read. It's too long. TLDR. We all know that. We all know. We There's been... Uh, uh, hundreds of YouTubers making thousands of videos for five or six, seven years on this very subject with Marvel Comics and Marvel Studios. We told you this was going to happen. Now it's happening. Now they're like, oh boy, we better fix this. Um, I would say, Chris, Marvel has a little better chance to fix this than than they have to f with Star Wars. I think like Marvel yeah, would agree. has a very small percentage where I think it could turn around. Like Dis Star Wars can't. Disney Star Wars done. Well, Marvel like has again they have all this these stories to pull from. Like right. they have so much that's great that they have the choice to pull from, which I wish they would choose to do that more often. Uh whereas with Star Wars, I mean, they they're like off the map. There's nothing. I mean, there's the I guess the the novelizations, but they that's already so different than what they're doing now that they I can't even use any of that stuff. Unless yeah, they did a multiverse Star Wars. <laughs> Well, they have 
space whales and zombie stormtroopers now. So and the world between possible. worlds, yes. Yeah. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, God. You, you, you haven't know seen Ahsoka yet? Danica, you haven't seen Ahsoka? No, no, no. Don't do it. No, I just, I've, I've always, and this is just purely based on looks. I hate that character design so much. <laughs> like it's awful and I hate looking at her. And so I I mean she might be a great character. She might be a great character. I'm not saying she is or she isn't. I'm just saying as an artist looking at that design, I don't like looking at it. So I just kind of avoid her. Wow. There is hey X-ray wow. girl, can you find I'm sure I'll be hated for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they might as, love you in the chat. I, well, I no, I mean like Star Wars is not my thing though. And I, I and I've never said I'm a Star Wars person and like and I don't have anything against Star Wars. I'm not anti Star Wars. I'm I'm a Dune lady. All right. I'm the the internet's reverend mother, you know, resident Dune lady. That's that's my jam. So that's kind of where I live. You're more Benny Jesuit vibes, I think. One hundred. Uh, who's a Benny? Yeah. Who's Benny Jesuit? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's supposed to be a series on HBO uh, Max. Right? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. That, that sounds like uh, it would be terrible. You know what yeah. video I'm talking about? X-ray girl, the '80s intro, Ahsoka. As reacted to it, we watched it yesterday. I, I reacted to it on Friday. I think you people did. saw me react to it, and then everyone else. Yeah, the Aural Knots. Like that's that. a great channel. A U R A L. Not N A U T S. It's Oral really Nauts, good. Uh, it's it's great, and and so yeah, uh, Alan and I reacted to it on Friday, and uh, it was fun. So, uh, yeah, so it, I, it, it looks like a good show because it looks because because if you do it in that tone, you're almost willing to accept a lot of the dumb stuff that happens because we like to you know romanticize things from the past, especially the '80s, and oh, you know. But so many shows then were dumb. They were fun. Many of them were self-aware, but they were pretty dumb. And just to throw out like, um, uh, you know, I know we black pill on a lot of things, but I like Robert Meyer Burnett. I'm a stupid eternal optimist. I want to like things and I want things to be good. So do uh, I. Quick, I just quick, like quick recommendation on something real quick. Totally killer on Amazon Prime. It is a female back to the future mixed with a Halloween slasher movie where a girl goes back in time and it's parts of it are completely stupid, but she goes back in time and she meets her mom in high school in the eighties. Mm -hmm. Who's completely unlike her mom in the present. Right. I don't want to ruin too much about it, but it's like, I did a whole rant once about how they're going to reboot back to the future. They're going to ruin it. They're going to put a woman in whatever. And they're just going to race gender swap everything. It'll suck. This thing totally killer. It's on Amazon prime. It's very fun. It's more comedy than horror. Mm -hmm. And just throwing that out um, yeah. as a recommend fun film to check out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I saw Beyond Fest was playing. I didn't see it, but I saw a preview for it the other night at uh, Beyond Fest. And it looked it looked interesting. Yeah. It's super fun. Sorry, Gary. Didn't know. It's OK. You guys get to do all this fun stuff like go to movies every day and Beyond Fest. Why don't you dude? You could go to you go to movies. I didn't. I just watched Amazon Prime on a. Well, I watched it on a 35 foot screen over a pool, which was a lot of fun. That's yeah. the I way. saw that. Oh, that sounds cool. That sounds really Super cool. Fun. Yeah. Uh, my wife made a great home theater, and I don't ever have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. It's kind of nice. It's kind of there nice. you go. Oh, but uh, did you find that video? I yeah, know? I did. I did. Let's watch it real quick, then we'll talk about loki or the lack of interest in loki let's but this is um as as stated uh, go watch as video watch uh film threats reaction watch everybody's reaction but here's the original video ahsoka tano mystical jedi warrior trained to be a child soldier by the master of evil she must learn to walk her own path while maintaining order in the galaxy i love this music i love the song <laughs> Ahsoka, a Jedi who fights against the forces of darkness using her twin lightsabers and incredible never before seen abilities. Water breathing, whale <laughs> song, and quick change. Okay, pause it real quick. So to give you con to give you context, Danica, in that scene, uh -huh. that's how quickly she changed her clothes. You can, nice. you, you can add about 
three seconds to that. They just cut out three seconds in between where she gets up out of the seat. Then mm-hmm. they cut to another ship, and then she opens the door, and she's in this full suit with her headpiece and everything. And it's right. Like, I know the? that's going to take a minute to put on that right? helmet, at least. I mean, with all those little things hanging out of the head. Your things. In the your right things. Spot. Your head. I don't know what they're called. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, me. I've watched my wife deal with her mane of hair, uh, and uh, yeah, we ain't getting anywhere quick. <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Nerdrotic. I mean, it's just the truth. All right, you can hit play. Joined by a ragtag band of friends, they journey into the unknown. Sabine, Mandalorian warrior, explosives expert, hopeless Jedi, street artist, <laughs> street artist, Hera, a pilot with the heart of a pilot who is always dressed to pilot <laughs> and Yang, Ahsoka's faithful servant a 25,000 year old robot that possesses more knowledge and experience than any other living being in the entire galaxy possibly the most valuable relic in all of existence he is now responsible for ship maintenance <laughs> That's the best one. Yeah. Like, he should be with the New Republic, hanging out with Luke. With the threat of a new Star War looming over them, they wrestle against the intangible genius of Grand Admiral Thrawn and his supernatural minions. It's a race to save one of the last Jedi's. As one of the last Jedi's is hunted by the last remnants of the Jedi's, <laughs> they must learn to put aside their differences, reconcile with their pasts, and risk it all to find a long lost ally who may or may not be able to help them. <laughs> but hope always remains in Ahsoka. Ahsoka. I just love how all the footage fits perfectly into the 80s kind of. Uh, it really does. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. And they, it makes me more interested in it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's also 4-3 four, four, in terms of aspect yep. ratios. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. Like an 80 show. Like, totally. That channel, Oral Knots, has a lot of videos that are like that in tone. Well, they'll just make something weird just for fun. And yeah, so I would definitely throw them a sub. And Danica's channel as well. Throw a sub in. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Hey. Thanks. So. Yeah. Yeah. Comic book girl 19 on YouTube. And I was just checking your campaign. It looks like somebody, you got a new, a, a new, a backer. So Hell let's yeah. go. Let's, Thank let's, you. Uh, let's my get beautiful backer. 100, 192 backers. Let's get it over 200 backers before. The I would love that. Oh, I would over love 200 that. at least. Come on. That. We can do it. Jump I in. I jumped. I contributed immediately. It's so. in Canadian before you say anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's some funny I money. I don't know how to change it. That looks awesome, by the way. That picture. I love it. Oh, thank you. That's actually a toy bike. That's like a toy Canada bike that was tiny. And we photographed it. And uh, my photographer, Ellen Amato, uh, photoshopped me on there and just did such a phenomenal job. I was just like, wow. Hey, is that amazing. a trailer right there? Is that it a sure trailer? is. A trailer. Well, it sure let's is. watch it. All right, one second. There you go. Two places, everyone. And action. I'm back. And this time, I've set a Kickstarter goal that's going to get our coils to the green line. Akira goes harder than any animated movie created before or since. And it's time we talked about it. Not only is the hand-drawn animation totally out of control, but its influence on pop culture is immeasurable. Come with me on a journey and learn more than you ever wanted to know about Akira. Things like Otomo's manga series and how it differs from the movie. It's way longer and Akira is alive. We'll break down the absolutely insane level of detail and craftsmanship that went in to this animation. Wow. Damn. What the what? <laughs> we'll weigh in on the two hotly debated English dubs. Streamline versus Pioneer dub. Fight. Which one is your favorite? 
and we'll learn more about the iconic soundtrack created by a scientist and his collective of amateur musicians. Prepare to have your mind blown away all over again by Akira, the documentary. This Kickstarter will help with the initial funding of this project, allowing us to start full-time work on Akira the Documentary. It will also give you fellow Akira lovers a chance to score some cool merch, get your name in the credits, listen to full audio interviews, and see the movie before anyone else. Pledge to Akira the Documentary now through October 31st and support the movie about the greatest hand-drawn animated film of all time. Leave me alone! Ah! Akira! You're gonna love it. You're gonna fucking love it. <laughs> oh. Hell yeah! Well I done. Like that too. It's cute. Thanks. I edited that, and uh, I'm so excited. So it looks like is that is that accurate up there at the top? The the it, number because it looks like we just hit a stretch goal today. Uh, our next stretch goal, our second one, where we uh, you'll get a download of the soundtrack of the movie. Oh. So everyone who pledges will get uh, that. And there's so many composers coming out of the woodwork who like want to work on this thing. It's crazy. I've got like That's a plethora awesome. of people. And then actually our third stretch goal, uh, if we can hit that, you'll get a sexy Tetsuo cosplay. Uh, signed Ooh. postcard and desktop background. So I, I did a sexy Kaneda. So I felt like I needed to do a sexy Tetsuo with like the gross arm, you know? And I, I have a friend that I've been talking to about shooting this and making like a whole thing of the arm and then maybe some under boob. I don't know exactly what it's going to look like yet, but I think a sexy Tetsuo would be pretty hilarious. That would that would really crack me up. Mm -hmm. Well, I saw you dressed in that outfit at uh, Monster Palooza. Oh yeah, yeah. Kicked off, so yeah, with yeah. my laser rifle that I made, it's crazy. Oh, yeah. It was great. <laughs> yeah, I remember good. seeing this movie for the very first time when I moved to Los Angeles at the New Art in Santa Monica. Hell yeah! From the soundtrack, right when it hits, you know, like this is something. It starts off kind of quiet, and then that you know the, the that initial motorcycle race with that music, oh, the percussion. So good. It's so epic. It's uh, so good. And it's such yeah. a, an odd mix of all these different musical styles. And again, like it's played mm -hmm. by a bunch of people who are not, you know, professional musicians or people who are just like on the weekends doing this thing and they're teachers and they're salarymen and they're like all sorts of and professors and scientists that created this amazing soundtrack. And it's just, it's That's so nuts. iconic. And I need yeah. that now. I need that soundtrack. I've been buying the hell out of vinyl soundtracks lately. Oh yeah. Yeah. For sure. 100%. So uh, for, forgive me, I'm backing right now. Okay, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> doing oh, right thank you now. so much. Oh, we can just do the so number much. change. Awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I'm so I'm, I'm so grateful for everybody's support, and I'm just so excited to make this movie. And I, it's like I said, it's going to be a wild adventure. And if you know you pledge and uh, come along with me. On Kickstarter, you'll be hearing all the background details of all the crazy stuff that we're going to be doing. I mean, I'm going to be trying to get interviews with you know, people like James Cameron and Guillermo del Toro. And oh, that's yeah. also uh, one of the things where, you know, you'll have access to full audio interviews with these people and you'll be able to listen to those before the movie comes out. So as oh, we're going along, definitely. like you'll have, you know, you'll have a little something to chew on until I can get the movie finished for you guys. Uh, and yeah, I'm like, and it'll, it'll be wild to see. And also just even going over to Japan, speaking with Kodansha who owns oh, the rights, yeah. you know, like hopefully you know, going and drinking with Japanese businessmen and trying to get them on board with this documentary. <laughs> it will be a wild adventure in itself as well. So I can't wait to share all of these fine. tales with you. Yeah. And if you go to Japan, talking. you could you could stay at the Godzilla Hotel. Oh, it's I not it's not there. expensive. To, so a friend of mine just got back from Japan. He He's like, I got a gift for you. I've got a gift for you. I uh, went out to dinner oh. with him last night and he brought me my gift which was a roll of toilet paper from wow. the Godzilla Hotel. Wow. <laughs> That's oh, a it's beauty. so cute. Kawaii. Super I, I, kawaii. I'm never going to yeah. use it. I'm never going to use it. I know. It. It's too cute. But you can't. I can't. Yeah. You but can't. yeah, uh, I, I can't wait because I really, honestly, I don't know anything. Thank I don't you, know Mark. anything about the making of Akira. I just know that it was hand-drawn, this incredible project. Now, I also... Remember going to Golden Apple Comics, Gary? I know you know that place. Oh yeah. Melrose. 
back in the old location where there I was just buying the Akira as it was coming out too. Yeah, yeah. You know, Ryan. Um, well, Leibowitz. actually, fun fact about that. Yeah, did you the know Leibowitz. that the Akira English uh, Marvel produced comic book? was the first i believe computer colored comic book and started computer coloring for comics wow because otomo like insisted on it and he really because in the mangas are black and gray it's it's black and white it's not colored but he's like oh well for american audiences they're gonna want to see color and um and also they flipped it too and so but he would have to go back and fix certain panels where it's like say like the colonel's jacket like you know jackets button on one side right and then, then they flip it he'd have to go back and like redraw that one jacket like that's oh, how wow. much dedication is goes into this thing i mean it's like from the comic book you know the manga series and the movie i mean just the levels of care that go into it are just astounding and i just personally have questions about how things were animated like the thing that really blows my mind to think about is the holograms in it and how like those are created with airbrush like somebody airbrushed these because they're they're not opaque you know they're transparent and it's like i used to be an airbrush artist and it's like wow that's a really like did you have just an airbrush samurai who perfectly made the same amount of transparency over 14 to 24 frames for a second of this one moving hologram image you know like i ah, that like thinking about that blows my mind and i want to know more of how that was created even like the light trails on the bikes that you see when they're going through the city it's like the way they trail off like that's airbrush and it's like it, again it's just mind blowing as somebody who used an airbrush i'm like uh, i don't understand like how that's even possible like it's incredible and there is a 4k version out there oh it's I'd, beautiful i just bought it actually like a month ago uh i'm like man i haven't seen this in a while and uh then i heard we were talking to you so now i'm gonna see it before friday night tights i guess we could say you're gonna be on friday night tights yes i'm yes. so excited i'm so excited thank you so much Woo! it's friday it's gonna be a fun one uh just be ready <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah i was gonna yeah. say get ready it's wild it's a little wild a little, little bit a little bit yeah, yeah. We're a bit spastic. Just uh, be careful, this guy Ryan. Ryan Ken. Ryan. All right, I'll Ryan. Hey, my hey, that's my <laughs> that's my diversity, equity, and inclusive inclusivity officer. You're talking about there, Chris. So be careful. Uh, yeah, my sure. Baby boy. I'll keep an eye on him. He, uh, Reddit loves him. Reddit loves him. Almost. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Twitter. And Twitter. Especially yeah. Black Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> what zitter? Whatever it's called now. Uh, best name I can think of is gifted five neurotic memberships. Woo. Keep an eye on the on the total for the Kickstarter too, please, X Ray Girl. That's like okay. the, the second thing I've backed on Kickstarter ever. Um Wow, I am so honored. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Oh, oh. Spawn Toys. Spawn when McFarland did the spawn toys, I totally backed the hell out of that. that oh yeah, great. that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. That yeah. was my first. You're my second. Um, that sounded weird. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh oh look. Well, I like an experienced man, so it's good that you've done it at least one time before. Oh, God. Yeah, I've been before. <laughs> uh, Shake from Hunger Team, uh, $37. Thank you, my friend. What's up, Shake? Uh, glad to see Danica is here. I adored her Dune Book Club series. Oh, thank you. Those are thank pretty you. good. I watched them, and I didn't, I didn't read Dune. <laughs> I read Dune. <laughs> Well, that's one of the things. If you don't want to read it, then you could just yeah. watch my book club, and well, then you really? can get all the details. You can get a lot of it. Well, uh, I've watched. That yeah, well. I've watched your book club. Tons of lore videos. Never. I've tried to crack the book, and I just yeah. can't get through that first. It's hard. It's tough. That's why I did Dune Club because it's it's tough. Yep. It's not. It's a dense book, and it's not easy to read. So I just felt like I would do a public service, and a lot of people are interested, and just needed someone to hold their hands through the sands of Arrakis. So that's you know, I that's me. I'll do that. It's, it's like you taught a class, like a no, it is. college course in Dune. It's so good. And didn't you do some Dune cosplay too? Oh like, yeah. Oh yeah. I say. mean, oh yeah. I've been the God Emperor. I did like a really gross, that was weird it. God Emperor. Um, uh, that was really fun. And then I've done, you know, Bene Gesserit, like just kind of Reverend Mothery looks and things like that. And um, and I just actually in September on the twenty second, we dropped a Dune Wave album. So I even have a full-length album made of Dune quotes 
that were collected across all six books that I, I collated into songs and arranged them into songs. And I uh, used my I used my Bene Gesserit voice to say the words. And then my friend Akira the Dawn, who's the master of Meaning Wave, he put uh, music behind it and turned them into bops. And I have a Dune Wave EP and a Dune Wave LP at this point under my belt. And and I found someone the other day I've always wanted to make. I don't know. Am I allowed to say like dildo on this show? Of Can course. I say that? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like I, say I, I really, I really want to make like the God Emperor dildo like really bad. Like I've always, I've wanted to do this. I want to make a weird sex toy that's based off of God Emperor. I don't know any who would buy it. Nobody, but I would want it. And I found well. someone who, who said that they're down to 3d sculpt it and like so if i can get like 100 people this will be like in the springtime if i get like 100 oh people god. to pre-order it i will make a god emperor dildo 100 i just googled what they look like i see why <laughs> wait it's it okay what are the keywords you're using oh i'd use I a vpn god emperor chris of Dune. That, that's, I, that's it I'd use a VPN. Uh, just, just, yeah, just got so, approved of Dune is enough. No, before, you don't need to actually Google yeah, that. You, last you part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, so before San Francisco descended into a post-apocalyptic uh, zombie apocalypse, there was a sh there was a store that was in a mall <laughs> called Good Vibrations. Uh, Good Vibrations uh, had themed things. Uh -huh. I don't know how they got away with Boys? it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Batman, freaking Superman, Spider-Man, Star Wars, mm -hmm. you name it. It was all there. Uh, it's not there yeah. anymore because uh, San Francisco has fallen into a hellscape. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I only knew about it passing knowledge. It's not like I walked in there and shopped. I was told. Sure. None yeah. of the chat's going to sure. believe me, but <laughs> I didn't. So <laughs> I don't care. Uh, Amy Jones for nineteen ninety nine says, I'm a friend of Bill's. Hail. Right on. So am I, uh, Gary. And you get me through a lot. Thanks, man. Hey, hey, congratulations. One day at a time. That's how we do it. Dr. Bob isn't too bad either. Friend of Bill. Uh, I haven't still found my home meeting here yet. I'm kind of working on that. I'll find one. It takes a while. I have to I feel comfortable. I'm kind of like Goldie Locks with meetings. <laughs> uh, oh, I have a weird story. Chris is gone. I have a weird story. So I was going now to, that Chris is gone. Tell now us. That Chris is gone. <laughs> uh, I was you can you can put this in uh, for your dad cast X-ray girl for dad advice. Oh, OK. okay. <clears throat> I was in a small parking lot picking up my stuff from the UPS store and I watched a guy try to park his Dodge Ram for five full minutes. And I, oh, wow. I was laughing my ass off. I, I saw was, that tweet. I saw that tweet today. <laughs> so I'm like, start, I'm like, because he's blocking. I can't get out of the parking lot. So I'm sitting there staring at him. And at first, I'm trying to hold the laughter in. And then I just like lost it when he when he almost hit a couple of cars. I'm freaking laughing my ass off at this guy. And he gets mad at me. <laughs> he gets mad. He starts flipping me off, telling me to fuck off. I know. That was my next question. I was like, did he see you <laughs> laughing at him yes. trying to park his ridiculous yeah. car? So he lost his shit. I'm like, well, listen, buddy, just c c dial it down a little bit. And I told him, I, I said, if you know, don't if you can't park it, don't buy it. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, well, I need to tweet that. That's good dad advice. Was was it a smaller parking lot? Like, was it? Yeah. Is it, it like, like a, a Trader small? Joe's parking lot? <laughs> yes. In like a city. But uh, it's kind of unusual because Texas parking lot's pretty big. But um, this one was really small. But still, it's like there was a street right next to it oh. with plenty oh. of parking. <laughs> <laughs> is this what you were talking about? That's a dude. Yeah, by funny. the way, no, I no, bought I this. I bought this in the '80s when Dune first came out. When it, they had the David Lynch Dune, yeah. I got th this Dune toy. I bought as a kid. That, that is a Dune toy. Gangsta. Oh my that god! Is original gangster, Chris. That, that is, is uh, so amazing. Well, see, that's the thing. I really should do a looks sandworm like it was built for a nooner. A sandworm one because that would sell more and oh, people would get it. But I'm moved. just like no, the God you're... Emperor one was just it's a whole new level of weird and niche. That and then you I... can make a special Christopher Walken one. Oh, uh, I got he's mine not too. the God Emperor is... though. Oh, yeah. 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 knife fight. Uh... <laughs> you gotta have your Chris uh, knife. I think I showed you this, which is the the. Uh... Duke oh Nito yes, the, yes, the yeah. Ducal signet ring. The Ducal signet ring. Hell yeah. So, there you go. Wow. Anyway, sorry, we're Dune nerds. Hold on, I got, hold on. you're Dune nerds. nerds. That's your, on, I've, your I've work. Got my, I've got my Chilton Dune right here. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! Wow. I, I've got a bunch of my books in, in my library, but yeah, that yeah. is. Uh, 
Yeah, it's a weird sort of like, you know, there's like certain fandoms that like Star Wars appeals to everybody, whatever. Yeah. But there's like certain things like Dune and Doctor Who that are sort of like a bit more niche audiences. Oh, yeah. For, yeah, for, for sure. You say that? Yeah, like I, I, sure. I think it's definitely more niche. Yeah, um, Dune is just so fucking weird. And so yeah. like and it asks a lot of you. So it's like it's it's not only like weird as shit. It's also like and we're going to like make it really hard for you to understand. <laughs> Just right. like, okay. <laughs> and there were concepts in it that like they resonate so like the Butlerian jihad and all of that. And oh I God. remember like learning about it and then going, like, why would they ever do that? Technology's a good thing. And now I understand. Yes. No, yes. no, I think Today. that's one of the best concepts yes. in it. Absolutely. The analog. Yeah. That's what I liked about Bellstar too. But the analog yeah. going analog and right. Uh, and right. it makes it it makes it far more interesting too. Uh, yeah. well, it, it focuses on humans and what humans are capable of. Yep. You know, and, right. and Frank Herbert was a humanist. He was just like, "Fuck technology! Like, what can we do?" And I think that's a really cool idea. Uh, Denis Villeneuve, blah blah blah. Uh, <laughs> I think did a pretty good job. Uh, when I first saw the movie, I was like, it's all right. I like it, you know? And then I watched yeah. it again at home, and I'm like, oh, I really like this movie, like, a lot. Uh, and I'm super bummed that the uh, the strike, the only thing I cared about was was Dune, Dune 2. And they shouldn't have they shouldn't have delayed it. That that was a big mistake. Yeah. I think oh that my gosh, mistake. that that franchise just can't catch a break because nope. it was COVID first, and then now it was the strike, and it sucks for me too because I was like, I released Dune Wave Odyssey, you know, in anticipation of the movie, and then the movie got pushed, and I was like, oh no, like what are you gonna do? And now like, they didn't need whatever. to push it. I mean, because the actor strike, they're gonna talk today. And I think it's going to end within like. You a think week. it's going to be today? Well, my or theory. Maybe in like a week. I talked about it yesterday, but uh, my theory was the actors being the dramatic adult pretenders that they are didn't didn't want to have be overshadowed by the writers ending their strike, so they drag mm -hmm. their feet on this one, so they can have the spotlight again and go, <laughs> "We defeated the bad producers and right, whatever the right, hell they're they're right. fighting over." Um, I mean, the AI fight is so funny right now because it's like. With writers, sure. I think writers had way more of a beef than actors did. I, mm -hmm. I just do. Um, but when it comes to AI, I've tried some chat GPT. Nobody, don't fucking worry about anything. Nobody's taken over. Nobody's going to. I read some of the finished. Uh, George R. R. Martin went out and sued the guy who basically did fanfic on, on chat GPT because uh, he wasn't writing Winds of Winter. Oh my yeah. god, I didn't know that was a thing. That's hilarious. Oh my god. They're like, you know what? Fine, George. We what? don't need you. You're taking too long. Yep. We'll write it. We're gonna feed it all of your stuff and we'll have a robot write it. That's and so it was funny. terrible. It was utterly terrible. I'm, I'm sure, you can tell yeah. George didn't write it. And uh, I'm sure. I'm uh, sure. So they're panicking over what is gonna be an artistic tool. I know the AI battle is like uh, you know, I as I said, it's on a Twitter, hot one to talk about. It's yeah. a hot one. I'd say worry about it when they start like 3D printing themselves as robots and coming to kill us. Yeah. But uh, until right. then, don't. Uh, Lord right. Baratheon for forty nine ninety nine. Yeah. So apparently, cheers, Lord Baratheon. Now, which Baratheon are you? Are you Stannis? Because Stannis is the one true king. Just Stannis is. the Manus. Stannis the yeah. Manus. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, all Loki season two is doing is setting up Deadpool three. Is anyone surprised? No, that's exactly what I think it's doing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I got it. You just have to wait for my video tomorrow. Sorry, I'd love to talk about yeah. it here, but I have a whole thing. Do you, uh, Do you think that that fucking homegirl is finally going to be Dazzler or not? Because I'm so tired of hearing about it. I've been hearing yeah. about Taylor Swift as Dazzler for like a decade. Isn't it been like a decade they've been teasing this? Yes, they have, and I think and I'm so tired. I, she better. She fucking better, or they better not ever fucking mention it again. I swear to God. I swear to God. I can't take this anymore. Well, the Swifties are selling out movie theaters. Uh, the, the, I guess those those theaters are selling out faster oh, yeah. than like oh, Spider Man No Way Home. I'm, I'm friends with Swifties. Yeah, I know Swifties who've been to several of her concerts. Not my thing. <laughs> Definitely not She's my helping thing. Helping the economy. <laughs> Um, she really is, though. I yeah. mean, God bless her. Like, I, you know, I'm not a huge Taylor Swift fan. I do love Shake It Off, though. I think that is like a hot. That's their one hot, little catchy song. That's yes. like, that's yes. like, a, it, that's, that's the song I feel like Dazzler would have created. I'm like, Allison Blair would, would. Yes. Say yes. I think she'd be song. good as Dazzler. She'd be good as Dazzler. I mean, it's true. But listen, I, I recently like Shakira more. Because she got busted again for tax evasion, which just makes her hotter. <laughs> again? Wow. Hell yeah. That just makes her hotter. Okay. Wait, have you have you seen the uh, Shake It Off? It's the only song I know of hers because they yes. did a mashup of Shake It Off with, with Trent Nine Reznor. Inch Nails. Yes, yes I yes, love yes. that. So good. Oh my God. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. 
Yeah. Oh my God. I love it so much. Yeah, I we can, we can pause for a second. Uh, I should mention, I should have mentioned this in the beginning. The, uh, usually we unlist these uh, when they're done, but because I'm releasing a video in like an hour afterwards, I'm going to private it, but then I'm going to put it right back on Nerd Live. My son is Braxton. Oh, is that okay? And he was diagnosed and you, with like, a brain mute the music and stuff so you don't get in trouble, or how does that work? Oh, you got to mute it, not me. <laughs> it's an extremely rare. I can hear it right now. Braxton oh, went I in for an eight hour it. surgery. Am I playing it? That's not me. It's not me. It ain't me. Well, it's it's the perfect drug mixed with Shake It Off. And I was always thinking, like, okay, so if I ever did, like, a nerd drag king performance, I would want to do a, like, I have a, a Dirtbag Dan character that I do. Like, he's my drag guy. And I would be, like, like Kylo Dan. And I would do it to that song. And I would want it because it's, like, all about the perfect drug. And he's, like, talking about Ray. And I would just do this Kylo Ren thing to the Shake It Off, Nine Inch Nails, perfect drug mashup. Like, that would be a dream come true. Oh, the Raylos would love that. I'm a Raylo. I'm a Raylo. I'm a Ray I don't love Star Wars, but I'm totally 100% a Raylo. That's the only thing that kept me going with those oh, fucking stupid can't movies. Can't wait till you talk to Ryan Jeremy are about get along. it. Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ryan's a big Bree simp, so like maybe you guys right, can share right, that. That's true. Together. He is right, dude. That's uh, see where they're fucking it up in the throne room, killing all those red guys, and she grabs his thigh. That's so hot. Get out of here. How can anyone <laughs> deny it? How can anyone deny it? I can, but that's okay. <laughs> he knocked my mom on abuser of Streamlabs for twenty dollars. Thank you, my friend. Says I'm Ooh. sure the Daredevil show will still suck. As Disney is incapable of making a good show, I am as sure of that as I am of Wendigo's abscond with, oh my God, what do you even say? Oh, with uh, Algonquin. Algonquin adolescence. That's why I put chainsaws in their torsos. Anyway, MCU's dead. It's dead. Um, yeah, Loki, episode one. Uh, uh, this will be quick. Uh, they introduced a new girl boss who I think is an older version of Sylvie, who's played by Lysa Aaron uh, from Game of Thrones. Don't know the actress's name. She's oh, great. I love her. She's in Prometheus too. She's so in the witch. I the like witch. her. I like her. She's good. Oh, I just saw the witch in in theaters last. Oh, week. the witch is the it's, shit. It's so, so good. good. So good. So that is good. a great movie. Uh, no, she's good. She's a good actress. I just uh, uh, you know, there's good people in this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Ki Hu Kwong, uh, who doesn't yeah. like him? Like yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. everything, yeah. I, I can't say his name right. But um, dude, short round. Everybody loves the story. It's a mm -hmm. great comeback story. He's been nothing but grateful. So like he adds to it. And at, you know, coming off of Ahsoka, it just wasn't as bad as Ahsoka. It wasn't mm -hmm. good. Uh, it was just very nothing. It was all set up. And uh, Chris, you can tell us more than anybody. You've seen four episodes. Does, I mean, does yeah. anything significant happen if the four episodes of a six episode series, by the way? Oh, in, in episode four, yeah. I mean, um, a, a Kang very a Kang variant is uh, comes into play. Mm. And then yeah. Quickly, I don't want to say what happens. It's just, yeah. I, 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 the thing is, this, I don't care about anything that's happening. I really just <laughs> don't. I, I am just so checked out. Like, yeah. I did care. Like, when WandaVision started, WandaVision was so good. The first episodes I thought were so clever. Like, what mm -hmm. is this? There's a mystery. What's going on? And then every Disney Plus Marvel series kind of started the same way. It's like, okay, there's promise here. And then they all went just, they all went off the rails. Every single one to the point where, like, they're just, I, I, they're ones I just didn't even finish watching. Yeah. I just don't care. But um, Loki, I'm not, I mean, there's only two more episodes left. I guess I'll watch them. But the fact that, like, this is this something you're going to, have to have seen to be able to understand the Marvel films going forward. Because if you look at the, if you actually look at the box office for the Marvel movies, the movies that are the highest grossing are the Avengers films, right? Because mm -hmm. you've got all these characters together. You got, yes. you know, Steve Rogers, Tony Stark, you've got, it's, you know, Hey, it's, it's a uh, uh, nerd Palooza or whatever. It's a uh, Marvel superhero, Palooza, whatever it is. It's a lot of superheroes in one movie. People want to see that. But yeah. all the other movie, Marvel movies are just like it's it's mixed, it's mm -hmm. mixed, and especially now Phase Four was like a complete um, mistake in, in retrospect. Bro, when I, when I saw that photo of Modok, I was like, 
they massacred my boy look how they massacred my boy like i mean he's a goofy character but oh my god like it was rough i could i was like i can't see this movie now i'm boycotting just there's a real easy way you you make him look like he did in the comics and you have him slaughter a thousand people that's right that's how you right. that's how you enter all of a sudden it's like this goofy character is not so goofy anymore right mental organism designed only for killing, killing. okay yeah. killing <laughs> if he's not killing then get out of here i don't want to be a dick don't be a dick that's some of the best writing i've seen in decades oh my god uh no oh, so loki no, nothing and it's going to go into daredevil uh, deadpool 3 which will i mean deadpool 2 is okay but it's nowhere near as good as Deadpool 1. And it's a gimmick movie. It's another multiversal gimmick movie. It's great to see Hugh Jackman back with Ryan Reynolds. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to see that. That's great. But it's going to be a gimmick movie. It doesn't really carry. So, yes, Avengers movies make the most money. They might be the most popular. But we ran a poll on the real BBC of, like, what was your favorite MCU movie? And you know what won? Iron Man. Yeah. Iron Man won. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And that's the genesis of everything. I yep. mean, that's, like, the beginning. Because it was simp- it was an origin story about a hero, uh, the villain didn't even wasn't even the biggest part about it. it was about developing the character, and that's why yeah. it's still everyone's favorite. Well, and it's also Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, I mean, he's helps. just you know he's got that X factor. He's he does. Good. He's pretty but good. But the fact that it's still everybody's favorite over like uh, we put up the Avengers and Infinity War and just yeah. all the top movies and Iron Man one because you know we. We didn't mind. I, I was really, I, I like the MCU. I like the interconnected, mm-hmm. but it was just like a little bit. Like Th- Thanos was like just in a little bit at the end. He was in mm-hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy just for a few minutes. It was yeah. all set up in a few minutes of yeah. screen time. Uh, a lot of talking, setting up the, you know, setting up the Infinity Stones. And you know what Loki did to the Infinity Stones? Made them paperweights. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the first right. Time you right. See, right. The f- first time you see the Tesseract. Uh, Loki, it, it's it's at the 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 time. Why am I blanking on their name now? But what doesn't matter. TVA. He, he rides at the TVA. He yes. And uh, the Asian guy has the tesseract, and he's all. And Loki goes, "Be careful with that. That's a tesseract." And he's all, "Oh, that sounds lame." <laughs> like, that's that's the first line about the tesseract, and I, it's, ugh, it's, I hate comic book shame in comic book shows yep, and movies. It's yep. so lame. It's just like get out of here. And that's bringing on a bunch of people who never gave a shit about comics, and it just it, it comes out of their pores. They can't even hide how much they disdain it. <laughs> I know, I know. Right? And, and then they're, uh. now they're writing because they want it on their resume, but they couldn't give a fuck. So now after five, six, seven, eight years of this shit, uh, we don't either. <laughs> that's right. the and we're kind of important. We're the audience. We help pay your bills. So yeah, there yeah. you go. That's uh, true. Sparta Chris for twenty dollars. <laughs> What would you all like more? Good old old style TV shows that were something like the 20 plus episodes a season uh, of a more compact TV series we have now. By the way, today is my birthday. I'm 32. Oh, man. Happy birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday. You're in your prime. Woo. Live it up. Uh, I guess love you all. Uh, with certain shows, yes. Like if you're going to make a, if, if you were to make a Star Trek show, you absolutely make it 20 plus episodes and make it episodic yeah. with maybe a couple little two parters here and there. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I miss that. I miss like the stories that you could or the shows that you could just watch and the episodes are self contained. Like I do. And as much as I, I like other shows too that you have to watch every single episode and it builds on each. I like that too. Don't get me wrong. But I do miss that kind of monster of the week. Like you can just watch it and have a good time and it's all done in one episode. Absolutely. Uh, wife and I are watching, we're going through Buffy all the way through. We just hit Angel. We're now we're Hell doing, yeah. we're doing the list. Angel's so good. I love Angel. Angel's the shit. So um, we're going, there's a list that uh, our good friend, uh, Mahler is a great YouTuber. Um, mm-hmm. He gave, he's a big Buffy fan. He gave me a list of where the order we watch it in from Buffy to Angel and we're doing that. And it's great. And Suits has been number one on Netflix for, four months, five months, mm-hmm. you know, people are going back and watching the procedural stuff. I agree with you. I, you know, when, when it's house of the dragon, I like, uh, I like prestige television, but the reason right. it's prestige is supposed to be rare and special. Yes. Rare yes. and special. Yeah. Uh, even one piece that, that, that wasn't an overarching story. That was mm-hmm. pretty much episodic. It was just introducing characters and, uh, eh, most popular thing this year video yeah. will be out, uh, at three, three o'clock. Three o'clock, people, get ready. Three o'clock. Get ready. 
Uh, Grand Wazoo 42 for 10 British pounds. Uh, thanks, Gary, for bringing Danica and Chris together on this stream. Uh, hail to Aww, John Schnepp. He is Miss Dear. Yes, oh. he is. Yeah. I was, I got really emotional when I saw the uh, Flash movie and you see the uh, Nicolas Cage Superman fighting the giant spider. And I was just like, God, John would have loved this. He would have loved yeah. this. Made me miss him so much. Yeah, God, doing that. I mean, because I know John invited you and I to be on the Collider Heroes show. Mm -hmm. So it was always like, it was like me, Robert Burnett, and you were the kind of recurring guests. Yeah. And John was like, I mean, I knew him since the early 90s where I met him at the Chicago Underground Film Festival at a bowling meetup of filmmakers. Hell yeah. Met John. That it's like, awesome. I mean, I want to bowl. He was so wildly creative, like back then, even. Like doing like, did he ever show you his video he made called Mad Science? It was no. like a Batman. It was like a weird Batman TV series from the sixties, like with two guys who were scientists, and it's mm -hmm. just like this very homemade, fun thing. But like, yeah, John, like he's, yeah, I don't know, he's just sorely missed for me. And yeah, for sure, for sure, uh, he was such a he was such a sweet guy, and he was so nice, and always just so supportive. And even though I was like kind of like hated on Collider Heroes, I was like the villain why? of Collider Heroes because I always like I complain about stuff, and I'm not just like I love everything. Oh, it's so good, you know. I'm just like yeah. I don't like this. This sucks, you know. And the people are like, oh, how dare she, you know? Like, oh, it was those are wild times going on Collider Heroes. That was a fun time for sure. Man, man have times have changed you're completely Whoa. welcome here by the way thank yeah, you exactly thank you. thank you i was gonna say you could complain i mean i just think complain you can just be honest about how honest. you right. yeah yeah right That's right it. totally it's just like i have high standards and i love these things and so i i hold myself to high standards so i hold these things to high standards as well and i know how good they could be like in my brain i'm like this could be so good I got fucked up and it makes me sad. That's I think that's the common element. Like the, the chat doesn't agree with half the shit I say and uh, right. the audience and same with Chris's. Yeah, uh, right. But what the, the thing we we have in common is like the shit matters. We care about it. Like, yes, it's standards, but it's also, you know, these stories have been a huge part of our lives. People have given us shit for I don't give a fuck, uh, you know, and it's so liberating to not give a fuck, by the way. But yeah. like. Marvel Comics, DC Comics were like the American mythology of generations to the boomers, to Generation yeah. X, to the millennials. They lost yeah. a lot of the millennials to the video games and they've completely lost Generation uh, Z uh, yeah. to, to, to manga and, yeah. and video oh, yeah. games. Like they blew it. Mm -hmm. They fucking blew it. And yeah. it's sad. And now we're seeing, you know, just all these, no you know, these, uh, I don't hate normies. Normies make the world go around. They pay for everything. But. <laughs> But they're but working on our shit, not so much. And uh, we've seen them ruin it with with comic books. We've seen activists come in with comic books and uh, with the film, and we've seen the same result. And it's ultimately a bummer because we love this shit our entire lives, right. and we would love to pass it on to our kids. But our kids are like, <laughs> yeah, keep it. <laughs> yeah, no thanks. Well, I mean, I think the big difference between like mangas and American comics, like the big two, like Marvel and DC, is because in Japan there's still like it's generally one person who's doing the art and the story and they have an editor that they work with and they maybe have a few assistants that help them with like parts of the parts of the artwork but it's really just like you have a vision like somebody with a vision who loves this story who makes something and it's something that they feel very strongly about and it's very pure and it comes from again a human being and a human heart whereas the stuff over at marvel and uh dc are just all corporatized and there's just too many cooks in the kitchen and like too many agendas going on and just too many it's and it's not like it's not about just one person who has a great idea for a story you know it's just it's about profits and how does it tie into this movie and how does it tie into this thing and how does it tie into this other agenda that we have and it's sad and it's just like and that's why mangas are doing really well and why those two aren't no and it's 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 a it's a completely lost battle I, i'm getting some b footage for my uh video today uh when i go pick up my kid from school we're gonna run by barnes and noble i'm just gonna pop out my phone and take a take some video of that little teeny american comic book yeah, session little and, then, and, then, and, then the, and then the half an hour walk i'll take a rush through the manga right. section right <laughs> right so, right right uh, totally god it's it's sad but oh well i mean you had your chance and i i you know uh i I like French comics more uh, because yeah. the, the art is 
unbelievable. And the uh, stories are hardcore. They're not superhero stories. They're mostly yeah. fantasy or, uh, you know, even go back to the uh, – and thanks to, you know, to, to Razor Fist. I got to give you – I wouldn't have never – I wouldn't never tried out Blueberry. It was fucking awesome shit. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good stuff. So um, mm -hmm. there's a lot of good stuff out there still, and there's tons of independent stuff, and that's great. I think comics yeah. ends up fragmented in the niche right. where it belongs. Right, right. Webtoons are great. I'm on that webtoon game, dude. I'm I'm reading my little silly ass webtoons all the time. People I love, that love stuff. those. People absolutely love those. It's really good. Uh righty. Um oh, I meant to tell Perry that's cool. X ray girl. That's fine. I think he's watching, so he is. Oh, hey Perry. Ugh. Hey Perry, if uh that doesn't work, if the OG one works, that's fine too. Whatever you need to do, buddy. I love you. Uh, the Darvatar for twenty dollars. Thank you very much. It says greetings from uh, the Bronx Falls. Oh, that's you're practically a neighbor, Texas. I don't. Uh, I know you weren't the biggest fan, but I loved Logan, twenty seventeen. Okay, uh, a lot of YouTubers were really excited for the places superheroes could go. The future had so much promise. What happened, Logan? I liked it as an Elseworlds. I, yeah. I, it, but it was, it's, I, when I walked out of it, I liked it, but I never watched it again. I don't own it on Blu-ray. I don't own it on 4K. I will never watch it again because it's so fucking sad. It's, it's sad. Yeah, it's it, so sad. And, and it's, and, yeah. But at least they tried something different. Like that, that was right. different back then. Uh, now it's become such a trope, such a trope. Uh, but um, at least they, they tried, uh, I, I, I'm a big fan of Days of Futures. I th Fox, for a minute there, figured it out. They, they're they not perfect, but I'm telling you, when Disney gets a hold of X-Men, you're going to miss their shit. You're oh, no. It's, I, I, I will rue the day if they ever make a live-action X-Men. I'm like, please don't. I used to be like, where's the X-Men movie? And now I'm like, please, no. may there never be we'll an X-Men movie. Like, please, just like, leave the, it alone. They had the biker suits on and everything, but like when Matthew Vaughn, if they should have let Matthew Vaughn have his way. They kept on pissing him off, and he walked yeah. away. And he had the best yeah. ideas. I know Kelsey Grammer as Beast was his idea because he was so, originally going to do X Men. He was going to do X Men three before Brett Ratner. Oh yeah. Uh, oh. Had to <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> we don't talk about X Men. Had to bail the country to avoid some accusations. Um, uh -huh. Brett Ratner uh, did X Men three, so he did First Class, which was. Fucking awesome. I love First Class and I like mm -hmm. Days of Future Past for what they are. And I love Deadpool. And I'm like, and Legion, the first two seasons of the Legion. I'm like, holy shit. They, how, they... how do you guys feel about finally seeing Wolverine in the fucking costume after being 20 years of being gaslit that it's yeah. going to look stupid and you're stupid for wanting to see him in the fucking costume? I'm kind of pissed now about you it. See it, in it. I'm kind of fucking pissed about it. Now that we need you. Kind of fucking pissed about it. Kind of fucking pissed about it. Let's put him in a costume. You know, it's like, like fuck you. It's too late. Like fuck you. It's like, not even the best costume. Want it anymore. Oh, I want yeah. the brown gaijin costume, man. That's what I want, dude. That uh, from uh, Frank Miller's limited oh, yeah. series. Yeah, yeah. Joe Rubenstein. That's fucking mm -hmm. good shit. Uh, okay. No. Uh, Dyson and Dyson. I, I. It's it's. It's great that they're coming back, but we know what it's going to be. It's going to be Deadpool kills the Fox X-Men universe, and it'll be kind of a gag, but then there's no real stakes in it. What made Deadpool work is it, it was breaking the fourth wall. There was gags, but there was actually a story in there, like a real story in there with some real stakes, and he had yeah. to... And that's when he worked in the comic books. He became too much of a joke. I never liked him in the comic books that much. I, I like the movie more, and I like the comic books. The Joe mm -hmm. Kelly run was good with Ed McGinnis. That was a good fucking Deadpool run. But, um, yeah, I, I, I don't think Disney Marvel knows what the fuck they're doing. The, 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 and, like, they were the chosen one. You were the chosen one. You owned Marvel. <laughs> you're supposed to adapt your yeah. shit properly. And now you're worse than, like, if Sony adapted Daredevil in in the early 2000s, I swear to God, that fucking wow. movie will be better than Disney's Daredevil. Ben Affleck's Daredevil movie, director's cut, okay, it's better, uh, will be better than Disney Marvel's fucking Daredevil. I promise you. It, it's they, they suck. They don't know what they're doing. Uh, they should just stop. But they don't. Uh, Buck's Basement for $20 says, Comic Book Girl 19, I still go to your videos. I love them. I adored your Batman versus Superman. Is it BVS? Yeah, BVS. Uh, okay. Yeah. 
I, I put be- the one where I did the the pearl necklace. I knotted a pearl necklace to show like how pearl necklace is like Martha's necklace should not be her pearls shouldn't be going everywhere. Oh, oh every <laughs> in slow motion forever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For and we see it in every movie. And like she's a rich lady. All of her pearls would have been knotted individually in between. So there I you show go. how to do that well, while I talk shit about the movie. Well, that's why you gotta <laughs> talk to the chicks once in a while. Uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and gods of egypt reviews thank you for oh, the love kidding. of x-men the fox yeah. movies are offensive i don't think they all are but uh yeah. wait, wait till disney wait till disney does the animated series wait uh you know everyone talks to me about that and i'll give it a day in court like i'll watch it i'll see what's up but again i just don't have very high hopes you know I, i'm just tired of getting my hopes up and then getting like upset so i feel like i just need to keep my expectations really low and mm -hmm. then maybe i'll be Maybe I'll be surprised and maybe it'll be something that's like super fun and awesome. You know, I'm hoping that'd be great. But again, I'm just like the X-Men to, to be an X-Men fan is to just kind of be a little bit of a masochist. I feel like, I mean, it's just such a, like a, such a terrible relationship and you're just always, it's I don't abusive. know. It's, it's abusive. I mean, this it's was, abusive. This it's an was, abusive relationship. I feel like uh, I just talked about American mythology, right? So the X-Men was, I was, I was there 3,000 years ago, Gandalf, when yeah, when they yeah. started jumping off and getting popular because they weren't. They weren't. They right. they went, you know, they, they did Giant Size X-Men number one, and that started getting popular, and then they started yeah. introducing Wolverine, but he didn't really start catching on to the late 70s. Late mm -hmm. 70s, early yeah. 80s, all of a sudden my friends are coming to school, and we're like, this guy got knives in his hands. He's freaking awesome, and he heals cool, fast. Bro. And he's got he's got ad. We couldn't even say it. We were ad gemantium or whatever the fuck we were right, calling right. it back then. <laughs> he's got a metal skeleton, and it's like, Ooh, who the fuck is this? And he's Canadian. It's like, well, you know, he's not perfect. And then uh, <laughs> we fell in love with it, you know. And yeah. uh, it took a while, and then you know, it just hit its peak, and it was the best selling comic book. Over over decades, over like yeah. it, it sold yeah. twice as much as Batman, twice as much mm -hmm. as Spider Man. Sold outsold fucking everything. The only thing that caught it for a little while, believe it or not, was Teen Titans. Teen Titans, Marv Wolfman's Teen Titans. Yeah, the best crossover ever. Best crossover mm -hmm. ever is the Teen Titans and the X Men. Uh, I don't know if you've ever read that. It's fucking. It's absolutely great. It's it's got Dark Phoenix. And oh, uh, yeah. dark side, yeah. dark side, dark phoenix. It's fucking rad. I have to look uh, for that. Oh, it's the best crossover ever. And uh, yeah, the, uh, because of uh, right, film rights issues, and then it sold forever through the nineties. It was doing really well in the early two thousands, uh, and then uh, they got a bug up their ass because they didn't have the rights, and they diminished their own fucking work. That like, yeah. They, yeah. it's so crazy. They're like, well, the Inhumans are going to be the new mutants. Oh my god! Oh, what a bummer! That was such a, such a mistake. And but and the reason too, again, why the X Men uh, were so good from like you know seventy five like up through the eighties and into the nineties too was because Chris Claremont yep. you had a guy who really cared and like knew these characters and wrote them and like brought them to the next level, and you had one guy's vision. Now eventually, there's other people who came in and helped too, um, but it's really just like the X Men. Their success is due to Chris Claremont. Chris Claremont, Cockrum, Byrne. Yeah. Uh, oh. They had quite a run in the 90s, too. Uh, mm -hmm. But Claremont was there. <laughs> like, that's, he yeah. was there the whole way. So you're yeah. right. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you watched One Piece, Danica? Have you watched One Piece yet? I have not watched One Piece yet. And I've never seen the anime series because it's so long. I'm like, I'm so intimidated to start it. You don't have it. to watch the anime for the live action. No, and so I'm, yeah, I need to get on it. I'll, I'll watch that for Friday Night Tights. You guys can watch the Makira 4K. I'll watch One Piece Ooh. and I'll be Hell ready. yeah. I'll be ready. Opla. Opla. <laughs> One Piece Opla. live action. I had uh, cracked open a couple of the manga out of order. Um, uh, Kimmy Anime, who's a, a viewer out there. Love you. Sent me like a one piece starter kit, but it wasn't just like, here's a few books. He, how many? He sent me everything. And how point. much is everything? How much is Th everything? Three boxes of stuff. I got yeah, toys. Yeah. I got manga. I got wow. Blu ray. Oh my God. He sent me everything. So I am wow. going through all of it now. And uh, yeah. it took me too long. So I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, I didn't, I, hadn't, I haven't watched a second of the anime. And I just jumped into the show because mm -hmm. I, well, I had time. I was on vacation. I had time. And it was great. It was cool. I got to watch it with a bunch of other, you know, my friends, some other content creators. And we're like, this is going to suck. 
let's roast mm-hmm. it. And they're like, oh, fuck, that was good. Away. Away. <laughs> you like know. that. Oh, oh, shit. Uh, so uh, Escape from Barbie Land for $10 says, Danica, if you were to pitch a Dazzler animated series, would it be like, uh, what would it be like and slash all about? Also, please have her make a uh, com- complextro. Complextro. See, okay, what's Meaning Wave? I'm so I'm old. Meaning Wave is is uh, Kira the Don, the guy who made the Dune Wave album with. Okay. He does Meaning Wave, where he takes people. So he's uh, called Meaning Wave, it, or is it that the kind no, that's of music? Some, that's like the kind of music he makes. Okay. Genre, okay. genre of, of of music. Weren't they makes, talking yeah. about that on uh, Normal World? You weren't watching Normal World, Danica, but shit, it's my friend. Uh, it's a, uh, my editor and friend, Get Quarterback Larry Show. Weren't they talking about that last night? It's weird. Mm-hmm. Like I'd never heard of it. Now I hear it twice. In two days. Okay. I'm just old. Yeah, uh, also, also, please make complextro music instead of disco. Yes, complextro is a real genre of music. Look it up. Okay. I'll have to look up complextro. I am not familiar with that. I'm guessing it's um, complex. Uh, yes. Uh, as far as like a Dazzler animated series, I mean, of course, like... F- for me, like knowing Dazzler's history, like I would want to, like I have, I've had an idea for like a Dazzler story, or whatever, for a while. But it's like it's so like advanced, and like most people don't know who she is. So you'd have to start with, you know, just again doing the source material, like go back, like, and you'd have to update things, of course, and make it relevant to today, and you'd have to change some things around. But I would just use the source material and tell her story and update it for today. And uh, and I think um, especially like Dazzler the movie is really interesting. You wouldn't have her in roller novel. skates. Um. Oh no, you guys. She's gonna be skating. Yeah, okay. for sure. She's gonna skate. Yeah, but I wouldn't be like, oh, she's cool. She has a skateboard now. You know, like I wouldn't. I wouldn't oh, thank you. Skates. So I know I, lots of skaters in Venice. Like I know all sorts of people who roller skate around all the time. So it's like people still skate. But I do have like. I would love to like, okay, so here's something that I've always wanted to do is like her and Black Bolt have a thing on the download that nobody knows about because she's literally the only girl that he can talk to because he can't talk to anybody, but she absorbs sound. And so she would be safe. Right. But then like they get in a fight and he like yells at her and then she like gets so much energy that she goes cosmic and turns into a light being. And then like we go up and then she has to deal with Galactus because she had a whole thing with Galactus like when she was younger and then, like, uh, you know, I, uh, I got some ideas. But that's, that's it's amazing that's, that she stuck around this long. I remember buying that comic off the rack because like number ones came out like never back in those days. Right, right. Right. So like if a Nova number one or Dazzler number one, and we're like, oh my ah. god. And and the thing well, was, is she was a disco superhero that came out after disco was dead. <laughs> yeah, well, funny. she was she was actually paired like Casablanca's records um was like doing a deal with Marvel and then yes. they fell, like they collapsed before the comic came out and then like Marvel's like, well, I guess we're just stuck making this Dazzler comic, uh, which is really funny, but I love her character so much. She's definitely like one of my top favorites uh, for sure. She's like, she's my home girl. Cause I, I love the thing I love about Dazzler that makes her different from a lot of the other X-Men is that she doesn't want to save the world. She just wants to be a singer, but she just gets getting pulled into all these mutant shenanigans and then her career gets ruined. And then she's like, well, I guess I just have to do this now, you know, but even amongst the x-men she'll always take a moment with them and be like hey guys i know we're like fighting and saving the world all the time but can we just like go out to the bar tonight and like have a good time like can we just like all go and like be people for a night and i think that's really cool about her excellent Mm -hmm. okay uh michael storm for five uh martian pesos uh comic book girl 19 is awesome i love her history of the classic x-men once a year i'd watch it just randomly when i need a good shot of comics energy hell yeah thank you thank you well i mean that's another thing i would love to do like epic history x-men like volume four at some point as well and maybe after the akira documentary we'll do something like that do it that would i just yeah it's a again it's a public service like it's just like let me let me talk about these cool things that we all know and love and and like quantify them in a way that you can that's really accessible those videos are great. I uh, around the holidays, I, uh, I I vape. It's lame, but uh, I sit around the fire <laughs> and I fire up my lore mm-hmm. videos, and that's how I relax. I listen to lore videos on all mm-hmm. kinds of stuff. I love yeah, lore yeah, videos. yeah, hell yeah. Uh, Tomok for twenty dollars. Thank you very much. Says looking forward to your Opla review, and I hope you're looking forward to the Barack Works fights. Uh, their madness. Can't wait. Can't wait. We're gonna go in a couple minutes, folks, because. Uh, I've got a, a video. Uh, our the square up will be Thursday night. 
Thursday night. Square up on Nerd Erotic Live. That's when the square up will be. Because uh, both of my videos should be out by then. And I'll have a little free time. What nice. am I doing Thursday? Yeah. I'm doing, oh, I'm, I'm oh, going. Eric Side July. scrollers and Ripa. I, I'm busy Thursday, but uh, Thursday night it'll be ten. It'll be like ten o'clock. It'll be ten o'clock. Uh, the Quiet Lion for four ninety nine for the whole panel, but especially for Danica and Chris. What is your single favorite and least favorite part of the new Villeneuve? How do we say his Villeneuve. Dune adaption. So, what's my favorite? And what's my least favorite? That's the question. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Our least know. favorite might be the same. Maybe. Zendaya. Yeah. How'd you guess? Because yeah, she's I the just... worst part. Oh my God. She's so <laughs> bad. It's Janie. She's really bad. She I heard she's an actress really good in that in that HBO show that I don't yeah. watch. Yes. But she just lacks the gravitas of the character. Yeah, she looks like a 14-year-old girl. Is she supposed to yeah. be 14? But she always looks like a 14-year-old girl. Well, yeah, she yeah. is supposed to be. She okay. is supposed to be young, but She's just, you know, you have Javier Bardem over here and, you know, and, oh, and I, I buy him as a Fremen, even though he's like got a kind of a Spaniard accent, whatever. But it's just like, she's just like, hey, Paul, what's up? You know, you're like, yeah, no, yeah. you're not okay. a Fremen. Like, okay. what? Like, feel, there's I, no accent, like nothing. Like, oh. I get you. It's like uh, Colleen Wing in Iron Fist, which was terrible anyway. But yeah. like, she just looks like she just got back from shopping. Like, there's no yeah. training involved. Like, she doesn't. She doesn't look hard enough. She doesn't look like she's been through right. battle or yeah. No, no, no. And she's just I the would, hottest name right now. That's all. My favorite thing would either it's maybe a tie between just seeing the sandworm. I mean, the sandworm is just so awesome. Like, I love the way that they do the sand and, uh, and the shockwaves, all that stuff. That's amazing. But also, the Hans Zimmer score is just like phenomenal. Like, mm -hmm. it is really iconic. He really like went for it. Yeah, I didn't love it at first, but it really grew on me. So I also like the score, but I think the production design and the fact that it's so different and you see there are David Lynch influences, which is fine, mm -hmm. uh, but how, how different it is than current sci-fi when everything just seems everything in Marvel is like, whatever, look, another space planet or whatever, <laughs> or like, you know, it just seems so mundane when things have gotten mundane, Dune like comes out and everything is completely different. And, um, yeah, so and Gary and I talked to a guy who I don't want to say I don't want to give away too much. We talked to someone who's worked on the production design yes. and like asked specifically like how it looks so good. And it's yeah. because he previses everything. Mm -hmm. Everything is like like when he's filming, he knows what he needs to get because he's already already the effects are already in play. That's how he's able to turn around so quickly. But they're doing something different for Aaliyah. And he says he doesn't know how well it's going to go over with fans. That makes me nervous. Is she a little two. CGI baby? Is she going to be like a little CGI baby? I don't know. That's kind of what I'm thinking. But like, is she deformed? I mean, like, I don't know. Like, how is, I don't know how that's going to play. <laughs> yeah. How it's going to work. Because the idea is ridiculous. I mean, David Lynch just cast a young girl, right? So. Yeah. She's but, so cute. But how they're going to do it. So I'm nervous for part two. But I think most of the cast, I think, is like perfect. When they were announced the cast, I knew exactly who they were playing. Like when they said right, Jason right. Moore, I'm like, Duncan Idaho. That's, you know, Duke Leto. That's, mm -hmm. they were all really perfect castings. And Dan was the only one that I was kind of like not super jazzed about. And Timothy Chalamet, I know people, he's America's twink, let's be honest. But, yeah. um, but you know, he is like accurate to the book. He's sort of a gangly 15 year old kid in the book. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, Although I, I love Oscar Isaac so much. He's so good as Duke Leto. He's fantastic. Yeah, he's but really I would have good. rather had him as Duncan Idaho because Duncan Idaho is actually in like every Dune novel. Spoilers. Right. So it's like, it's yeah. like, oh, but I want more Oscar Isaac. He's so good. I wonder if Jason Momoa dressed up as Johnny Depp on set. Did you guys yeah. hear about that? Okay. Oh, yeah. It's stupid. Yeah. Amber Heard wrote in notes that Johnny uh, Jason Momoa showed up at, at as Johnny Depp on set, but actually that's just how he dresses. It's no, yeah, I was going to say, isn't that just how he dresses? It's like, bohemian, yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. hobo chic. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. So she's, look. she's dumb. It's okay. I've, uh, seen, I've seen guys dress like that in LA and it looks stupid. It, I, it, it looks, <laughs> it looks, I'm, not, I'm not one to judge fashion. I'm very basic. I'm very. I feel, I feel like everything. it depends on the, like the time and the place. Like if you're in like right. a cool, weird club at night, it can work. But if you're like at target in the middle of the day, like buying toilet paper, yeah. it doesn't work. Yeah. So you yeah. just gotta, you gotta pick That's your burning time and a stuff. place. Yeah. Uh, you're not a Portuguese farmer. Right. You're, you live in LA. Give me I'm going to read these 
three really quick, and then we gotta get out of here. So Iron Caster for two dollars says, "I loved your Chris Claremont videos, uh, comic book girl." Uh, thank thank you. you, Iron Caster. And Cinema Gulp for five dollars. Huge fan of Danica. Say hi to Space Brain for me. You're a legend. I will. Thank you. Uh, thank never you. mourn for two British pounds. Shout out to Danica for the rad collab with Akira. That's gonna be rad. <sighs> Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so grateful. Uh, Barry Allen, 40 yen. Hey, Baldika. <laughs> hey. Baldika, 19, by the way. Sorry. Yes. I had to yes. get to the Roman numerals. I'm like, oh, oh that's 19. Yeah, yeah, Duh. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Carnal. It's classy. It's 19, but it's classy. There you yeah. go. Uh, I've been a fan of Danica since her comic book, uh, see, comic book girl 19 Superman Rebirth comic review. Thanks, yes. nerds, for getting her on the Nooner. Please check out Mystery Danica Theater on Twitch. Also, a good time. Hail. Cheers. Ooh, you play yeah. games. Yes, yes. No, no, no. We, we watch movies. We watch oh. movies. Yeah. Yeah, we just watch oh, yeah, we watched yeah, yeah. Fright Night last week. I think we're going to do Fright Night, too, this week. We're doing spookies, spooky season. I love it. So. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Fright Night. I do, too. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's so good. It's so good. I saw um, Creature Features did Nightbreed, which means you can show it on YouTube and not get busted because they really? can only. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I want to test that theory because I fucking love Nightbreed. I mm -hmm. love that movie. Um, Matthew Faxine for five Canadian pesos. Uh, those lore vids get me through some hard times in my life, especially those Song of Ice and Fire lore vids. See, Gary? Aww. Great minds think alike. Cheers. Yes. Cheers. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Well, that's another thing I discussed. It's my pleasure. It's my great honor and a very distinct pleasure. And it's our pleasure to have you on uh, and look forward to seeing you in a couple of days. It's going to be rad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a wild ride. <laughs> so please support her Kickstarter if you can, you know. If, uh, if you can. Yeah. If, if you, you can. can. It'd be a cool thing to see. Yeah. And, hell yeah. And you'll see her back here soon. X-Ray yeah. Girl, what you got coming up? Uh, I have Leanne Starr coming on Poor Choices and Gaming, and so um, I'm going to be going on the road tomorrow, so there might be an impromptu road stream. We'll see. So, it's up to my channel. Chris? Uh, Hollywood on the Rocks in an hour on the Film Thread channel, and a quick plug for another thing that Danica did. One of the Barbenheimer, her Barbenheimer <laughs> review. Yes, well, I, yes. Fashion was on point, but there's this great, for anyone that's not familiar, like Danica throws out her opinions here and there. This rant at the end of the Barbenheimer review about men is something yeah. I think was so smart, something a lot of people need, need to hear. When you hear like Manosphere folks, uh, if you've ever heard that term, sort mm -hmm. of giving to me just bad information uh, on yeah. certain things about male-female relationships, Danica just drops common sense Truth bombs and Ooh. I love it. It's a Barbenheimer review. Oh, yes. First of all, watch the whole thing, yep. but pay Thank close you. attention to the very end of that. Is one of the best rants. I'm surprised. Maybe, maybe, um, maybe Dan Vass can clip it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and yeah. <laughs> That's an in joke. But That's like, an inside yeah. joke. Yes. Yeah, but like it's such a smart like. Yes, I feel a lot of women feel the same way you do, Danica, but yeah. I'm kind of afraid to say it because it's not cool because they want to push certain types of agenda-driven, like, mm -hmm. common, what do they call it? Bill Maher has a dumb term for it, but it's like zombie lies, where it's like mm -hmm. a, a thing that's like a common-held belief, but it's actually a lie. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Great, great rant. That rant seriously clip that part out yes and just see what happens it is so good i would I mean, in addition that. to the barbenheimer like she and she did this mashup of barbie and oppenheimer cosplay because yeah. every girl was dressing in pink but you did right. something really it was so good it yeah so I, cool. I had like this brown suit and brown hat like oppenheimer suit but then i had, like a hot pink shirt with a hot pink tie and then like a yassified face so i was just like this barbified oppenheimer situation it was very oh, david yeah. bowie <laughs> it yeah, was, like, it was. People, like it people was were awesome. like oh this reminds me of david bowie i'm like high praise thank you so much <laughs> no that 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 video i sent it to gary i'm like dude i know you watch comic book girl 19 but i said you have to Pay close attention to this video. So yeah, yeah. congrats wow. again, and Thank you. congrats on the success of the Kickstarter. Go Thank to that so Kickstarter. Much. Over two hundred backers now. Join the legion of people that will support it. I know what it's like to make a documentary about that, about like a topic, a passionate topic. So I'll be there to help support, and just like can't wait to see, can't wait to see it. Especially you've got all this experience doing the X Men docs. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it's going to be incredible. 
Yeah. And you've been so helpful so far too. I mean, you've just been like such a guiding light through this process. You've given me so much great information and I'm, I'm so grateful. So thank you, Chris. And thank you, Gary and X-Ray Girl for having me on today. And thank you to everybody who uh, pledged today on the stream. I'm, I'm just, I feel so honored. And again, thanks for coming on. Thanks to the chat. Thanks to the Mod Rodics. Thanks to everybody who left a super chat and donation. You help keep the lights on. Now, uh, I'm sorry if you're watching this and you're behind. It's about to go private. You're going to get mad. But it, it'll uh, it'll be back up on Nerd Rodic Live in two hours. I have a video coming out at three-ish. If it depends. Soon. Soon. Ish. Soon. We're, we're waiting on some rendering yeah. speeds. Uh, but uh, today, you will get the one piece live action review it's 30 minutes so nice. that's that's long for me uh Bar <laughs> barbie is ant-man said albert nada for two canadian pesos i you should make a video on that albert <laughs> you should make a video on that. <laughs> barbie's ant-man uh so thanks everyone and we will see you guys later ciao bye, bye.